Cheers, everybody. Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Happy Friday. Cheers. <sighs> Hope y'all are doing good tonight. Cheers to Super Saiyan Joe Koo. First one here tonight. Let me hit it for you, Joe Koo. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Ah! Cheers, bro. Thank you for being here this Friday night uh, from this dud channel. Hopefully some other people join us tonight. Hope you all had a good week. I've had a great fucking week. These new techniques, these mental techniques I'm learning is, are they working? They're working, my friends. Yes, my mental powers, they're working. And life is, I'm bending life to my will. It's working, all right? It works. You guys are fucking stupid. If you're not following the instructions given to you by those who were here before. Just letting you know. Look it up on YouTube if you know what I'm saying. Cheers. All right. Uh, again, we are on a dud channel, unfortunately. We do have three channels at the moment. The regular underground broadcast. The emergency broadcast, which we're doing it right now. And then we do have the illegal broadcast channel for all you motherfuckers. Again, the underground, the emergency one is where we're broadcasting temporarily live is the emergency broadcast channel. Uh, we'll keep it as the emergency in case we keep getting banned. We'll keep coming back to this to stream live. But the illegal underground broadcast channel is where we've been watching uh, illegal pay-per-views. Oh, yeah. And I didn't realize, but Gomer Kyle is here. Let me hit it for this motherfucker. Cheers, Gomer! What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Gomer says he didn't get a notification. Oh, big surprise. YouTube doesn't like us. Why? Because we're different, and we speak the truth. So they, they try to do everything to sabotage this channel. That's why we only have 500 subscribers. Fuck you, YouTube. Anyways, we don't even come out of searches. You put underground broadcast, some other fucking guy comes out and doesn't even have nothing to do with being underground or broadcasting. Son of a bitch. Anyways, the illegal underground broadcast where we've been watching wrestling pay-per-views. And me and Gomer and Super Saiyan Joku... Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Last Sunday, we watched WrestleMania Night 1 and Night 2, WrestleMania 40. And in two weeks, we will be watching AEW Dynasty, Sunday, April 21st at 6 p.m. on the Illegal Underground Broadcast channel for you guys, you motherfuckers. And uh, the way we show, I show it is basically about that size the screen is. Uh, and it's not going to get any bigger. And there's usually moving graphics in front of it. So, you know, you still see it, son of a bitch. Don't complain. And if you want, I just can give you the link on the chat and you can watch it in your computer or whatever. You get, get all the viruses. I'm taking the risk. Uh, using my VPN, I'm getting all the viruses for you. Shit, no sound. But yeah, we're going to watch this ass. Might be, you know, the last paper. Well, I was going to say, yeah, the last pay-per-view AEW ever does. No, Tony Khan has a lot of fucking money. And as long as he doesn't get bored with his little toy, there'll be an AEW. Uh, you know. It's the way it is, but we'll talk about that more tonight because it's in the news, fellas. Some, some, some stuff. I actually got some wrestling pop culture shit for you tonight. Uh, make sure you watch these channels. Make sure you keep out and look out next Sunday. And I know you don't get notifications, so just go to the channel and look for. Uh, if you go to the main page on the main channel, which is the Underground Broadcast channel, I'll have whatever live streams coming up. It'll be up there, even if it's from another channel. I'll have it up there, so you can just go to that link. Uh, but I'll be there next Sunday, the 21st, for you motherfuckers. Uh, we'll chill again. Uh, tonight's show, we do have, finally, some Daredevil shit that I was supposed to show you last week, but I'm so drunk and high, I forgot. I'm also going to review the X-Men 97, which I gotta tell you, uh, was really, really fucking good. 
And then uh, we got some other some shit from CinemaCon. They showed a lot of ass to people, and we can't finish without your local celebrity ass of the week. You know how that's done. Uh, so get ready for that tonight. Uh, but let's get on with the motherfucking show, and we're going to start with the goddamn comments like we do. Uh, anything you send me to social medias, uh, I will post here. Son of Man 665 for Twitter. And the underground broadcast with underscores for uh, fucking uh, Instagram and shit. And then it just disappeared right now because I'm drinking high. But anyways, uh, here are the comments. <laughs> We're going to start with... Uh, oh, this one was last week's. Sorry about that. Hound Dog 3476 on the Dan Danny Masterson started a gang in jail. Uh, he put ha 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 ha. Oh, and by the way, I don't know that... All of a sudden, that, that's a two-week video already. Because that wasn't even from last week. That was from the week before. And uh, all of a sudden, this video goes viral. I don't know why it took so long. Everybody's, everybody's up, still till now, people are watching that fucking video. I don't know why. Uh, people like Hyde, I guess. Uh, or whatever. Uh, but that, thanks for commenting, Hound Dog. Uh, and putting ha ha ha. Cheers. Got a bandana on and a beard. Hey, maybe you mean you can start a tag team res wrestling uh, team. Hound Dog, hit me up. Yo, 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 we could be like the Briscoes, except, you know, I'm the woke one of the two. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lilier? Li li Lilar? I don't know how to say his name. Lilier? Or Lilar Blaster 3416? The Danny Masterson has started a gang in jail. He puts a bottle of laughing emojis and, and, and some cheers. Cheers, motherfucker. All right. Oh, I'm the Danny Masterson again. Like I said, this video went viral and shit this week. All late. He says, I don't think so. They shipped him from the hole in Koro Koran. To a psychiatric station because he didn't want to leave his cell and said repeatedly that he was meant he has mental issues. Uh, read the read the pause the video when you start it and read the warning in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know the facts. We know the jits of it, and we make up everything in between. That's how this channel works. All right. Fuck you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for commenting, Pedro. We love you. For being Mexican. Or maybe you're white and you're just choosing to be called Pedro. And in that case, you're just being racist. Cheers to you either way. You like Tessa Blanchard? Oh, yeah. I could be like Tessa Blanchard. Nah, that Tessa Blanchard is way bigger than me. And hotter, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got a big chin. Like that and shit. What happened to her? She just disappeared ever since she said the N-word to that chick. <laughs> she was on the way to WE and AW. And then that's it. One little N-word and you're gone. It's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked up. She should do OnlyFans. I don't know what her problem is. Just do porn. Hit me up. You know, I'll be the other model. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Bletcher. Damn, a lot of people commented on this one. I'm only going to read the first one. I'm going to read everybody's. No, everybody else is replying to him. God damn it. Too many replies. How dare you, buddy? And I think that's the picture of... Um, what's this guy's name? This is from... Uh, uh, Big Daddy. I think it's called Big Daddy. Um... Damn it, I forget this fucking guy's name. Uh, but yeah, he's got his eyes crossed. He played the, the homeless... No, he didn't play the... It was Mr. Deeds. He didn't play the... He played a, a crazy guy with, great, with crazy eyes or some shit like that. Uh, oh, fuck. I'm gonna hate myself for not knowing this guy's name. I'm thinking too much. I'm, I'm, I'm already stoned. Anyways, how dare you, buddy, on the Danny Masterson started a gang video says, What the fuck is this? Is this guy for real? You're the son of man, and you're watching the underground broadcast, motherfucker. 
cares? I know it's a little jarring when you first see this, but understand this is the year 2024. You better get used to this kind of shit. It's gonna be all over your place. In your schools, your libraries, your churches, your fucking grocery stores, and your bathrooms and shit. Get ready. Cheers. Steve Buscemi, thank you very much, Gomer. I'm gonna get you, whenever we make it, I'm gonna get you as a producer. You're gonna be the guy shooting me the shit right here. You're gonna be the Vince McMahon. Uh, you're gonna be like, Steve Buscemi, son. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi, yeah. That's how it's gonna be. It's gonna be badass. Don't worry, Gomer. You get paid minimum wage from my state, not from yours. Cheers. Uh, Jeffrey Atkins. Oh, 4760 on the Danny Masterson. What the hell is even that? Uh, it's a Scientologist guy that drugged and uh, sexually molested and raped women. Some of them that were even his girlfriends. And when you have a girlfriend, do you really have to drug her to, to have sex with her? I mean, I guess he wanted to rape her and he couldn't rape her if she was awake. I guess that's understandable. Pretty fucked up. That guy belongs in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, Jeffrey Atkins. Thank you for commenting. And I like your avatar because it's like two faces of himself blended into one. And it looks like he's got three eyes. Oh, cheers. Uh, I think it, he on the Son of Man reads YouTube comments. Jeffrey Atkins put, "What the fuck is this?" All right, I didn't really explain this, you sons of bitches. I mean, all you gotta do is read the descriptions on the channel or go and re pause the video in the beginning. If you don't, you don't quite understand what the fuck is happening. Uh, don't hurt your eyes and shit. Don't hurt your souls. That's why I put, you shouldn't be watched by anyone. Period. All right. A lot of sensitive people nowadays. He put it again. What the fuck is this? All right, I'm, I'm just going to skip you. You're just putting the same comment in all the videos. All right, anyways. Try to be original, motherfucker. Here's another guy. Doobie Keebler. On the Danny Masterson video. Like I said, the video went viral. <clears throat> he quotes me that I said, And everyone passes him the ball. As I was saying, Danny Masterton, everybody wants to be his friend. They choose him to be on his team and they pass him the ball. And he puts, also, Vatos Masterson for live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Doobie Keebler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a crazy motherfucker. Mm -mm. Cheers, y'all. Happy Friday. Just, just getting started, man. I think I've been sober all day and shit. I had a really good day. I made a lot of money the past week. Mm. That's all life is about, making money. Oh, in America. American life is about making money. Oh, and fucking bitches. Little Wayne said it. Fuck bitches. Get money. Fuck bitches. Get money. If you don't live by that, you're not American. You dumbass. Cheers, Doobie Keebler. Uh, also on the Danny Masterson started a gang, this guy named Tan Barrett. Oh, you're insane. And he puts a bunch of laughing faces. This guy's like an army or Marine. Or that could have just been a crazy uh, fucking Saturday night. But it's just him and a bunch of guys in fucking uniforms and shit. That's badass. Either way, it's badass. Whatever it is you're getting into with those guys. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Tamboretto. 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 I don't know how to say it. I'm just trying to say it. Cheers, motherfucker. And thank you for serving this great country. You better not be lying. You're in the fucking forces, son of a bitch. Uh, on the Danny Masterson video, some guy, user, go 7Z, whatever, a bunch of fucking random characters, probably a bot. Uh, but no, I don't think it's a bot because this is a too intelligent of a fucking comment. But he puts, um, you took the Pirates of the Caribbean look too far, man. And I actually want to read one of the replies. 
Somebody named Pink Freud. <laughs> 62 put woke June Sparrow. Oh, I, I like that. <laughs> Chad, you know, I always wanted to, if I, was, I wanted to go to Disney with an idea of the next Pirate of the Caribbean movie would be like, I would be, uh, Jack, Jack Sparrow finds out he has a son, a son from, what was that chick with, he was Penelope Cruz or something, he fucked her or something and, and he had a son and he, she never told him. And so he goes in looking for him. And then he finds me in a burlesque house and shit with a bunch of hookers. And I'm there and shit with makeup on and, and then like this. And then he finds out that I'm his woke son, pirate son. Oh, that'd be badass. I wanted to go to Disney doing the woke shit. I'm like, that'd be perfect. I'd be like Jock Sparrow Jr., but I'm Mexican because he fucked that Mexican chick. I'm the son and shit. He comes looking for his long lost son in a whorehouse. In a Mexican fucking island somewhere in Cuba and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, it, June Sparrow. I'm gonna have to. Hey, can I borrow that fucking Pink Floyd? I'm gonna put that in my script. It, it, I'll be in June. June Sparrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where do you have all the tattoos and shit? Yo, it'll be badass. I just say, just say. It would be too, it's too, it's, I think it would be too woke for Disney. It's too woke. They will not go for it. They, they're they trying to go just a little bit of woke. Annoying kind of woke, but not, they want to go full woke because they're not ready for that kind of shit. Anyways, cheers, user. And that other guy, Pink Freud. All right, let's see who else. Uh, Dan, USA 1 on the Danny Masterson. Man, this host is funny. Awesome. Hey, you better not be a bot because I was like, what the fuck is like I went into this guy's channel and he just made the account like in January. I hope this isn't a bot because it's like he's saying or maybe he's being sarcastic. Fuck yeah. You know, I'm just saying. Hey, you know what? His name's Dan USA one. What if this is Danny Masterson from jail? Oh, holy shit. He's watching us. Oh, cheers, Dan USA. Danny Masterson from jail. Watching us right now. Cheers. <clears throat> Hook me up with some Scientologist bitches. Come on, man. I know you got him. Just say, I need another beer. I'm done with this motherfucker. Let me see. I need to show you all. Rack him up, rack him up. Pulling up from my ass chest right here. Uh, I don't want to break a nail, so I got to use an actual thing here to open it. Cheers. All right. Next is... uh. No, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am. Let me hit it for this misogynist rapist. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. He put a timestamp. I, I heard it. I was thinking of doing what he who should not be named used to do, but I'm just going to click on it live. I don't give a fuck. I don't know when to stop it anyways. So uh, here we go. Let's see uh, what he wanted you all to hear that I said last week. Oh, fucker. This guy has no... There's no saving. No saving face for this asshole. For this pervert. And this sexual molester. Motherfucker hangs out with no man, I bet. Anyway. Okay. Alright. Uh, he said, Freaking son of man. I'm seriously considering changing my YouTube name now. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, no ma'am. Y'all motherfuckers know I just fuck around with all of y'all. Don't ever take anything I say serious. Gomer, Joku, no ma'am. All you motherfuckers. Even the, even the haters in the comments. I love you. All of you. Why? Because you're me. That's why. So cheers. To all of you. And all of me.
I just fucking around, no ma'am. I know you're not a rapist and a, and a molester of women. I hope not. And if you are, you better quit your ways, you son of a bitch, or you're gonna end up in jail with the rest of them. Teddy Masterson and shit. I'm just saying. Cheers, no ma'am. I love you. Thank you for being, uh, commenting. It's been a while. I think you, you, you showed up in a live a long time ago. Cheers, man. I appreciate you guys who, who comment and don't show up. Woke Packers. Ah, oh, speaking of a woke Packer, he just fucking Satanist. Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for the Satanist. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. Rocco, fuck my life, says. Holy shit, son of man. Uh, He's talking about the Denny Masterson video. This video has over a thousand views. You did it. You've gone viral. He puts a lot of laughing faces. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Yeah, fuck you, Rocco. Talking shit. <laughs> yeah, we did. We went viral over a thousand views and shit. Um, and a lot of comments. Some haters. I think we'll see a few of them coming up. A few of them down below, we already said, what the fuck is that? Well, I mean, you don't worry about what it is. Just watch it. Eat it. It'll make your stomach sick. But after you shit it out, you're going to feel good. And you're going to want more. So don't worry about it. Cheers, Rocco. Fuck my life. I love you. He also says on the podcast video or whatever. Uh, I used a bunch of laughing emojis. I used to come on here for the comic book stuff, but my favorite segments are now the celebrity ass. Funny shit, son of man. Cheers to the woke pack. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, Rocco. Thank you for that. And, and all the woke pack. Thank you. You dick. Oh, um, uh, Anthony Timmons, the motherfucker, is becoming a regular commenter on the Diddy's Past Exposed video that I put. He says, he has always been part of Hollywood Perv Network, and the Illuminati is strong in this one. I don't trust any of these sickles. Fucking P. Did Diddler. Um, and then on the Miami, had an awesome, young Miami had a perfect job. Video Anthony Timmons says, Did he still diddling, rapping, and tapping? Yeah, this motherfucker, he came back from the Caribbean after they raided his houses. He's living his life like the same. He's still going and picking up little girls and shit. Pretty fucked up, man. He don't give a fuck, but it's, it's gonna go down. It's gonna go down. Just you wait. He's getting away with it right now, but he's not in court yet. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Oh, our resident Australian, the car. Let me hit it for this asshole. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready, because the cunt is here. Cheers, cunt. He says on the young Miami at the perfect job video. Mammy talks like she got mouth of marbles. Uh, so dumb. I bet she mixed up coke with washing powder. Now she's going to jail. Probably you should audition for the city girl's son. You'd be perfect. Aud addition. Oh, that's the reality show, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but I think you need to be dating a celebrity. Someone famous, rich and famous and shit. And so far, nobody I fucking message on Instagram has DM replied to my direct messages, my DMs and shit. I'm sending it to every every fucking celebrity I know. Man, women, trans, unidentified, non-binaries. Nobody's replied. What the fuck's going on? Uh, one of these days, don't worry, somebody's gonna reply. You know, I don't want to get that that desperate that I'm gonna have to fucking start you know messaging people like fucking Rob Schneider and shit or fucking Andy Dick, and, you know. Nick Schwartzin, bunch of lames like that. Fucking fuck that, you know? I'm trying to go up there, you know? Shit. Anyways. The cut. Cheers. 
Thank you for commenting. The cut also says on the dead he comes back, the, his past comes back to, to, to haunt him. Diddy's the creature from the Bohemian Lagoon. Man, Diddy's way into geek philosophy. Greek philosophy. I bet he's got tricked out white van. <laughs> I can tell you from the evidence and the accusations, he, he, this is basically he's another Je Jeffrey Epstein. You know, like these girls are just the tip of the iceberg because he probably has a whole network of other girls that he's already got on drugs that his son was bringing over through these high school parties and shit. And he's already fucking brought them for parties for rich celebrities and fucking record executives and, and, and anybody, anybody that went to Diddy's parties. And we're going to talk about this later on tonight. A bunch of names came out, all right, or were already there this whole time. But I don't get into it right now. But I'll tell you, this is another, this is the black Jeffrey Epstein case. It's, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get bad. And he's probably going to have to kill himself. Or let someone else do it for him. In order for the secrets to not be exposed. More than what they already are. Uh, but anyway, let's keep going. Cheers, cunt. Thank you for commenting. Oh, yeah, Doug. Unfunny. Let me hit it for this dick. Woke as fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woke as fuck. <laughs> Doug Unfunny on the Diddy uh, video, he says, That video with the girl he adopted is very disturbing. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is another Jeffrey Epstein case if there ever was one. Yeah, that's what I just said. I can't wait to see Hova go down for this too. Cheers, son of man. Hashtag. Live. Uh, Jay-Z, bro. Uh, it depends whether Jay-Z ended up pissing somebody off or not. Uh, I don't know what's going on, bro. I think, uh, I, I, I have a feeling Jay-Z's next in line. Yeah. And Beyonce. All these motherfuckers. And Kanye knew this whole time. Nobody believes him because I think he's crazy. But he said it. We showed you last week. Anyways. Cheers, Mr. Doug Unfunny. Alright, I'm drinking too fast, you sons of bitches. Hang on. <sighs> Excuse me. J. Hart W. <clears throat> Excuse me. He left a, a, a timestamp. Uh, let me click on it. See what I said. Some of these kids got paid off or signed an NDA. And got a lot of money and fame. Keenan Thompson. Came from Nickelodeon. Now he is on SNL. Rich and famous. And shit. He says, I literally spat my drink out when you mentioned King and Thompson out of nowhere. You're a funny dude. Um, I'm just stating the facts. King and Thompson was in Nickelodeon. Now he's rich and famous. He was under all those shows and shit. What happened to all his other friends? They didn't get famous. Wonder why? What different thing did he do or accept that everyone else didn't? I don't know. Just putting it out there. All right. Yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? Ooh, yeah. All right. I'm going to get copywritten. Ah, that's my favorite Keenan Thompson fucking skit for SNL. Ah, cheers, that motherfucker. And cheers to you, Jay Hart W. Thank you for commenting. Anthony Timmons, 9328. He says, Did Ariana Grande took hush money? It doesn't surprise me. This is the same bitch that shit on her American fans. Screw him too. They can both get decommissioned. 
No worries here, garbage human beings, this fucking guy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, Ariana Grande is like, does she even make music? I don't even know. I mean, I don't, I never listened to any, I don't know what she does. I mean, I, I'm, I don't think I've ever heard a song, and if I did, I wouldn't know it was her. <laughs> yeah, and I don't care enough, I guess. Yeah. All I know is this little girl, she came out in The Voice, and she's skinny and shit. Apparently, she's like a singer or something. Uh, and used to be a Nickelodeon, and uh, this guy, you know, licked her toes or some ass. It was crazy. You know, there's a bunch of these accusations and allegations. But uh, thank you, Anthony Timmons, for the uh, for for that a uh, uh, little bit of uh, your two cents. Cheers. These sons of bitches. Um, Kit Kat forty five twelve also in the Ariana Grande video. I often wonder why she left and disappeared. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. She's like. I, <laughs> I don't keep up with these kids, you know. I, I mean, like I said, that's not my generation. I don't know her music at all. Like the the, the only time I saw her ever was in The Voice, because I used to I uh, you know I used to watch The Voice back then, and I think she was on it or some ass, uh, and shit. But yeah, 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 yeah. But just sick shit. Yeah, foot fetishes. Yeah, this guy likes foot. He told the little girl, "Walk on eggshells." Let me record it. That, that was your audition. Your audition. Like, you walk on eggshells. Here's a bunch of dog dog shit. Walk on it, step on it, and squish it all over. Don't worry, I'm taking video game. Aren't you don't you, don't you want to say any lines or don't you want to don't you want to take a, a, a some video of my expressions? No, little girl, step on this dog shit and let me fucking take some video of your feet. You got the you got the job. You're hired. You squished it just right. <laughs> all right, we're moving on. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kit Kat. Uh, for that shit, you nasty son of a bitch. Um, on the Danny Masterson video, OG Capo, he says, I thought they kicked him off the Scientology team. Like, seriously, they disowned him. Yeah, we don't know all the facts. We just fill in the gaps. All right, motherfucker. I already explained it. Just look, read, read the description. Pause the video in the very beginning and read the message before anything else goes into your eyesight and your earlobes. You fucking guy. All right. But cheers, OG Capo, because that's a pretty cool. I don't know what your avatar is, but it looks dope as fuck. And uh, and your name's fucking OG, OG and Capo as fuck. So cheers. All right. Anthony Timmons, Jessica Alba joins uh Deadpool and Wolverine. Says Jessica Alba was one of the bright spots of my early Fantastic Four movies. Love Jessica Alba. I think she was everyone's favorite thing for those movies because those movies were like mid at in, at very least. You know they're better than some of the the new Marvel movies for sure, and they're better than everything that Fox ever made from the X Men. Um, but it was really like. It was really, to me, because I, I can go back and watch them, they're watchable, but to me, it's almost like literally seeing what a cartoon, what a literal cartoon episode turned into live action would be. Like, literally, just... Because it's really cartoonish. It, the kind of stuff that goes on, and campy, and stuff. But Jessica Alba just makes it perfect. Perfect! I'm not gonna lie, when they first cast her, I was pissed. I was like... They got a Mexican girl. I was a little boy too. I was a little kid and I was pissed. They got a Mexican girl. What the fuck? Two storms white and she's blonde and shit. And they gave her blonde hair and blue contacts and shit. And I like these wow fucking races, you know, but uh it was great. I loved her in it. I loved her in it and I wouldn't have it any other way for those movies. I can't wait to see her in Deadpool and, and fucking Wolverine and shit. Probably get killed. Because that's supposed to be gonna happen to everybody. So, cheers, Tim Hens. Thank you for that. Uh, Joseph Galba. Shit. Um, fucking a new guy, Frank Furter. Or Frank Futur. No, it is Furter. 
Frank Furter, 2891. On the reading the comments video. What the fuck is this thing? Well, if you read the title of the video, it says the Undergone Broadcast reading YouTube comments from March 5th, 2024. And if you read the fucking thumbnail, it says thank you to all subscribers. It's March 5th, 2024 reading YouTube comments. Um, I mean, if you don't know what video you're clicking on by the title and by the thumbnail, then maybe you shouldn't be on YouTube at all, Frank Furter. You dumbass. Cheers. Thank you for commenting. Fubar. 611. Oh, on Diddy's past exposed. Wait till they find the puff booty tapes of Obama and Big Mike with Jay Z and Beyonce. Oh, my. Wait till they find they've already found them, my brother. All that's going to be evidence in court, or at the very least, a way to blackmail Diddy into committed suicide so none of this shit can be exposed. This is the same shit they did to Jeffrey Epstein and shit. This motherfucker was trying to run his own Jeffrey Epstein's uh, uh, blackmailing ring, Sting, and uh, and now they're going to bring him down because maybe he, he got somebody on tape in an orgy with a gay sex with a bunch of black men and, and a bunch of fucking black women naked watching them. Uh, but he got someone really, really important on a video and they didn't like it and they wanted the video back and they said, well, we got to take this motherfucker down. And now, and the, the guy was probably Jewish too. Very powerful, Jewish, rich as fuck. Uh, but now they're bringing down Diddy and his whole fucking blackmailing fucking sex indus industry that he was running and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gay sex industry. Cheers, Fubar. Thank you for spitting some truth. Oh, and I think he's a Marine. I salute you, sir. And thank you for serving the country and shit. And killing anyone who opposes freedom in America. Cheers. All right. Uh, let's go. Oh, bot. I think. I don't know. I, did, I, I, I forgot to go and look at this one. User, my 7TG, a bunch of fucking random fucking nonsense. On the PD, P. Diddy, he says, y'all are sick for this one. Hey, well, thank you, motherfucker. We try to do our best on this channel. Cheers, user. <sighs> on the Danny Masterson <clears throat> video. Excuse me. Excuse me again. Jim Bowen, 38533. It's called the Butt Buddy Gang. Ah, he says Daddy Masterson's gang is called the Butt Buddy Gang. The ass fucking gang. <laughs> Cheers! Jimbo. I like that. Jimbo. I've always wanted to meet a Jimbo. My God, what's up, Jimbo? Anthony Timmons on our first look at Ghost in the Thunderbolt says, Honestly, I don't even remember much about this character, except that it always reminded me of something out of a video game from Destiny. It does look like something out of Destiny. I'm not going to lie. I have zero interest in any of this ass that Marvel is producing now. Anyways, cheers, son. Cheers, Timmons. I feel the same way. The good Marvel died already with Tony Stark. That's just what it is. The only thing that's just saving it and holding it together by a th single little thread is a little boy, little virgin ass, pink booty hole boy named Tom Holland. He's holding this whole universe together with his star power and raw talent. But I'm telling you, he's tired of this ass. He's going to move on. He's going to get Zendaya pregnant. 
be a be a be a stay at home dad. He says he wants he wants to stay at home while she goes and makes all the money for the household. He's ready to give it all away. Put up his spider trunks. Say fuck you, Marvel. Your movies are shitty. You're embarrassing yourselves. I'm out. And I think he should. He should just when the ship is sinking, you quit and you leave it. Or you start a ruckus so he can fire you or you fucking just fuck up, you know? Fuck him. The ship's going down. Let's destroy some of it before it goes down and shit. Is that something on fire? I'm just saying. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Oh, Gomer Kyle. Uh, the Denise Richards is a self-made woman. I'm going to play your intro again, Gomer. Because, uh, just because you just came up on the comments suddenly. Here we go. Oh, shit. What did I do here? I pressed all the wrong buttons. Sorry. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for being here, and thank you for commenting, as always. Gomer says, uh, and I move this, of course. I was fucking with it. Press a button. Gomer says, on the Denise Richards is a self-made woman. Uh, holy shit. Before I even read it, something amazing just happened on the goddamn comments. I have to stop the whole fucking show because... Jose Trevino just showed up. Let me hit it for this asshole straight out of Houston, Texas. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Yeah. Tienes envidia, puto. Ha <laughs> ha! Cheers, you motherfucker. Cheers. You're the shit. We love you. Um, Gomer says on the Denise Richards self-made woman video. That was a party all of a sudden. I still haven't read the comment, I know. That was a party right there all, all on its own and shit. <laughs> we threw a party there for you, Joe. Cool, you sell them, bitch. <laughs> alright, alright. Back to reading the comment. Back right? to reading the comment and shit. I'm not paying. Uh, I'm not paying that when I've already seen her. She was nude in wild things, too. Plus, she was in Playboy. She was younger than two. Anyways, cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Live. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, and Indie Phantom said, I uh, replied to him, I need to get those Playboy pics. Hashtag. <laughs> Fucking Indie Phantom. They're out there, folks. I've seen them. Uh, but you don't have to pay for to see your naked on OnlyFans. Just type OnlyFans leaks <laughs> and they come out. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. That's how I got them for the channel. Trevino, thank you for being here, Texas, Houston, motherfucker, you son bitch. Cheers. <laughs> Hell yeah, bros. Now it's a party. Now it's a party. I got a fellow Texan here, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the Diddy video, Matt Cook, he says, you look like Madonna without her adrenal chrome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I bet you a Madonna would look like me without if she fucking didn't do her adrenal chrome. Imagine what I would look like if I did adrenal chrome. Holy shit. I would probably look like Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt. Fuck. It'd be badass. Maybe even Justin Bieber. You never know. Oh, no. Uh 
One of these days, Adrenochrome will be available at a corner of every store. Just you wait. But right now, it's only for the elite. Great, but it's coming, it's coming. Don't worry about it. We're all going to be the same. Cheers, Matt Cook. Thank you for commenting. You got it. Oh, Joe Three, in your comments. And you know what? I'm going to play your fucking intro again because it's so badass and shit, and I like dancing to it. All right, here we go, Joe Cool. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tienes envidia, puto. <laughs> Joe, Joe Trevino says, What up, young buck? I mean, A-W, I mean, gay. Just kidding. Son, I had to take a dig at your boys in I am E-W. They just signed their death certificates with that nonsense best stage video. We're going to talk about it later, you son bitch. Uh, uh, where, where are we? Where are we? I'm assuming you saw it. Anyways, I was out of town visiting family, so I wasn't able to catch the live stream. You did a great P. Diddy. All right, all right. Let me. He put a timestamp. Let me see my impersonation because I didn't see it. Take that. Take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how he does it. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he says. Have you heard him on Drink Champs when he was flirting with the rapper Fabulous? Yes. Yeah, I, I had too many videos last week. Uh, that was a video that I was going to put, but then I was like, ah, oh, it's too long, and I already said too much, so I'm like, don't worry about it. But yes, he's being super gay. <laughs> he's hitting on everybody. He's hitting everybody. It is embarrassing because he's drunk, and you could tell he's drunk, and because he probably doesn't forget. He, thought he didn't. I don't know. He's drunk. He doesn't care. I'm gay. And, he, and he's just fucking <laughs> harassing everybody and shit. It's fucked up. And he says, it was embarrassing. I thought that Mo was cool in the 90s. And my buddy back then said, that's gay. Anyways, great show as usual. Hashtag. Live. Uh, hashtag. Uh, where is it? I got this motherfucker. Hashtag. World order. Oh, uh, yeah. One more time, because he put hashtag WWO. Hashtag. Whoa, whoa, pack. World order. Oh, uh, yeah. That's how we do in this channel, bitches. Cheers. All right, all right. Don't worry. We're talking about it tonight. Let me go. On the Danny Masterson video, uh, started a gang. Frank Savage. He has to do something to pass the time. Well, he does. You either masturbate for everybody for money, but you also run the risk of somebody wanting to rape you because you're already teasing them. Or, uh, you know, you can uh, fucking, you know, I guess you lift weights and shit. I mean, I guess everyone else tries to do that, but, you know, the bigger guys are got all the good weights, so you're just going to have to be doing push-ups and sit-ups like an idiot. Uh, so I don't know, man. Yeah, start a gang. That's a good, that's a good side hustle there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Frank Savage. Appreciate you in your comment. And I like your avatar. It's like this fucking, like one of those fucking kid Batman's, those little R R R R kids, Batman. It's badass. I like it. I don't know how to say the word because you can't say words nowadays. So I'm just saying our kids. You can make whatever you want out of that. Anyways, Jessica Alba joins Deadpool and Wolverine. A new guy saying that his name is Dawaf. Dawax Facts. Dawax Facts. He's got some kind of teddy bear who's angry on his avatar. I've been wanting to tap since Idle Hands. He's talking about Jessica Alba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, 
you know what? Since you fucking mentioned Idle Hands, because I'm going to be honest with you, that's the first time I ever saw Jessica Alba. She was, I mean, uh, I must have fucking masturbated to her in that movie so many times. I mean, I think that VHS, I fucking broke it because I kept on rewinding and pausing it and shit. Rewinding and pausing it, rewinding and pausing it. It was awesome. Um, I did something special for you. The Wax Facts. And actually something special for all of us. I'm bringing us the best of Jessica Alba underground broadcast style for a few for 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 under a minute. Here we go. Cheers, Dewax, the Dewax facts, and cheers to Jessica Alba. Oh yeah, that's what I talk about, motherfuckers. The best of Jessica Alba. Cheers. Ain't nobody got nothing on this. Mm. And I gotta get a beer. Okay, and I'll let you guys enjoy this for a minute while I get another beer. Yeah, yeah look at that. Just natural, perfect Latina heat. Sons of bitches. Ah, but she saw how perverted and crazy Hollywood was. I mean, she was willing to go far, but not too far. And she said, all right, I got my money. I'm out of here. I'm done fucking jerking fat men off, off to get roles in movies. I got my money now, motherfuckers. But she left. Cheers to Jessica Alba and her sexiness and, and her years of sexiness. And you know what? I kind of want to know what her mother looks like. Her mother must be fucking hot. That's all I'm going to say to give birth to this. You know the mom's got it going on. Oh, yeah. Damn. Oh, that was badass. Hey, cheers to the wax facts for that. That, that would have never been possible or never would have happened. And that motherfucker hadn't let that comment. <laughs> All right, all right. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Don't worry. She looks exactly the same, Trevino. She, exactly the same. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, Super Saiyan Joku. Oh, yeah. I'm going to play his intro again. <laughs> I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra sauce. Ah! Cheers, Joku. He says on the Diddy uh, video, doesn't Diddy realize that he has daughters? Hang on. Excuse me, guys. I had to sneeze as I was reading the comment. That sucked ass. Anyways. Uh, doesn't Diddy realize that he has daughters and what goes around comes around? And he puts comes with a C-U-M. <laughs> Especially on the face. Hey, even the boys... They're gonna have to take that, take that, take that. Cheers, small flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, Joku. They've all, they probably all have already taken that, taken that, taken that. All right. They have, they were into parties. They were fucking drugging their own friends for their dads and shit, participating in these fucking Roman orgies, gay orgies and shit. All right, the condition from little kids. I heard the stories, Illuminati stories. People that broken out of the family say, fuck you, this is not normal. But I've heard the stories. Hey, you're asleep when you're like four or five years old in the middle of the night, a bunch of hooded figures come and they fucking wake you up and they take you down to the basement and you don't see none of their faces because their faces are covered with masks. And the things they do to you, it's conditioning every night. Every Friday night on a full moon, they take you down there. A bunch of people and they're your teachers and neighbors and shit and your uncles and aunts and fucking dads and moms and they're all doing this shit to you. That's what they this is what happens, small fucker. You think I'm lying? It's all out there. All these videos were taken down from YouTube because they don't want you to know the truth. Illuminati does this. They condition their children from the beginning. This is normal. This is how we live. This is why we have power and money. 
That's what they do. Sick sons of bitches. The stories are out there. You fucking look for them. They are out there. You think I'm lying, you sons of bitches. I'm not. All right. Anyways, we're moving on. Cheers, Joku. Inti Phantom commenting. You know I'm going to play this fucking Canucks fucking intro. Here we go. Indy Phantom says on the Denise Richards is a self-made woman. Oh, yeah. Son, I looked for you in the eclipse. Oh, yeah, that's badass, bro, dude. I don't know if you all saw the eclipse, bro. I, okay, the last time, because I've been in the path. Of, oh, this, is, this, this time I was right in the center of the path. But the last time I was in the edge. And the last time... I did, it was, I think it was last year, sometime in August or September. I don't remember what it was. But the last time, it it didn't, it didn't cover it all where I was. It was only like part of it. So the sun was still shining. It got kind of gloomy, but the sun was still shining. But if you use the glasses, you could see that the moon was actually covering some of it. I used the glasses and shit. This time around, the eclipse where I live was right in the center. And so they said that I was going to see it turn to nighttime. And I said, I've always said, that's bullshit. There's no way in hell it's going to look like nighttime. There's no way in hell. It's probably just a little d dim. Like, they're lying. Like, there's no way in hell. Because I've, I've heard stories, but I had never experienced it. <laughs> that morning, I had the glasses. Cause my sister mailed them to me. I, she had a bunch, and she said, mail me some. I had the glasses and that and the last time also I took out my phone and I tried to fucking take a picture or video the last the last eclipse and it didn't come out of my phone. And then I put the glasses over the film because I thought, well, maybe it needs the glasses. I put the glasses over the film of the phone, the lens, and it still didn't come out at all. And my fucking brother in law, who's a nerd about photography and videos and shit like that. He was telling me that because of the new phones and the way the photography or some ass, you are not going to come out, period. You need a special kind of camera and lens. And none of the phones, another thing you have is going to be able to capture. He goes, I have a bunch of shit and I'll be able to capture it, but you won't. And I said, well, I'll fuck you and all that shit. And so this time around, I said, man, I was fucking, I'm not like, fuck my phone, you know? And I, I walked outside when it's, when it was about to start. And I put the glasses on and I'm looking at it and you know, there's still sunlight and the moon's sort of covering it. And then all of a sudden, I guess enough time passes by that the moon actually covered the entire sun. And I took my glasses off cause I was curious and I swear to you, man, I regret not having my phone <laughs> because I swear to you, it was nighttime. It looked like fucking 9 p.m. at night. And I was like, and the birds that have that were standing on the on the telephone posts and on the on the on the on the, on the uh, electric lines, they were freaking the fuck out and they were all chirping uncontrollably because they couldn't understand why all of a sudden it turned nighttime. They were fucking freaking out. Um and I looked up at the sun without the glasses, and you didn't need the glasses at that point. The sun was a black sphere. No light. You could just literally see a black sphere in the sky. Black, dark. And then, dude, I'm not playing. Around... The actual black sphere, the sun, I guess it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was dark enough that their stars shone out. I saw stars around and I was all like, the stars are now visible. There's no sunlight. 
It lasted for like three minutes, maybe. It was long. It felt forever. And I was like, it's nighttime. I was kept looking around and I was like, it's nighttime. The fucking stars are out. There's a black moon, a black star in the sky. And then as soon as the moon was moved a little bit out, you know, just a little bit, just a fraction, that little bit. And you had to put the glasses on because it was too bright. You looked up and it was just a little bit that was peeking out that light all of a sudden shone and that little bit of light was a lot of light and i was amazed at how bright the sun is i was like that's a lot of light and it even feels like maybe it's a spotlight right where i'm at it's like a small little spotlight where i'm at but i'm like it it's a lot of light for just that little peak that's peeking out the sun is really powerful i felt all of a sudden uh yes i saw the eclipse and i was right in the center motherfuckers uh cheers to y'all i regret not having my phone but at the same time i kind of am happy i didn't have my phone because i think i would have been too occupied trying to get the perfect this and this and that and social media and i wouldn't have fucking really dude i felt like i can't even explain to you it was cool and I, 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 I wish everybody could experience that. It was really cool. Uh, that's all I'll say. But anyways, let me read the comments because we've been taking too damn long and I'm really high going on a trip with my feelings and shit. That's not the kind of channel. We're getting drunk and high. Cheers. Indie Phantom says, son, I look for you in the eclipse. Oh, fuck only horse. Denise Richards went from wild things to porn kings. Only, only fools. I think that's what he was trying to say. Is trashing the internet, but you know that Charlie Sheen is paying for that shit. Cheers, son. Cheers. Charlie Sheen already paid for that shit. I, that little girl's over 18. He's done paying for them. They're on their own. That's why they're doing this pornography. This is because they're on their own. <laughs> Cheers. Plus, he has AIDS and does crack. How much money could he have? Not that much. Uh, let me make sure this is the last comment. I think it is. Yes, it is. Cheers to all of you who commented tonight. I appreciate you, motherfuckers. We read an hour of comments. That was a lot of fucking comments because of that piece of shit, Danny Masterson, that went that made us go viral and ass. But you know. Send me stuff to my Twitter and uh, social medias, Instagram and TikToks. I have the stuff right up here. Whatever you send me, I'll show. Even if it's just you hanging out with your friends or whatever, some ass. You don't know, fucking you found some, some dead frog on the floor. Reminded you of something. I don't know. I'll post it here. Our channel sucks. I'm just trying to come up with content. You know what I'm saying? Cheers to you all and thank you for commenting. Thank you for the comments and shit. Let's get started with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And uh, we're going to start off with some great news, fellas, because none other than the juice. O.J. Simpson has finally paid for his crime and has died of cancer at the age of 76 years of age. <laughs> About goddamn time. Son of a bitch. Now we're just waiting on Cochrane to fucking bite the bullet. Son of a bitch. And the, and the, the goddamn Kardashians are keeping quiet about all this. They haven't posted a single post about it. Not even the alleged uh, daughter <laughs> that he supposedly had an affair. That's why they have the big, the big Kardashian <laughs> comes from him. That's the, the rumor everyone says and has always been saying. I don't know. Just saying a rumor. Um, there was 
chat. Rumors, whispers here and there. They're saying that this son of a bitch, that he had a bunch of people close to him. Maybe the Kardashians, other celebrities and shit. Kenan Thompson. A bunch of motherfuckers came over and visited him before he died because he knew he was dying of cancer. And he had them all sign NDAs and then non-disclosures. Like, you're not going to say you wear a mask when you come over to my house and shit. No one knows. It's shit. Uh, but they, yeah, yeah, that that's what was going down and shit. <coughs> and he was, he was joking to some of these people he had talked to. Eh, maybe I'll confess a few days before I die. Can you believe that shit? <coughs> Sorry, that weed's too good, motherfuckers. This son of a bitch to the point of death, was still celebrating in his victory of murder. Supposedly. Allegedly, I don't know. It sounds like it's true. This son of a bitch didn't give a fuck about nothing. I just say. Nor McDonald would have loved this. This son of a bitch probably finally, finally, it took fucking over 40 years. Was it 40? It must have been at least 30 years. 25 at the most. 30 years. Fuck it. 30 years. This son of a bitch is finally gonna pay for the murder. The glove doesn't fit because you're wiping your hand like this. Make your hand like this, you son of a bitch. The, the, the glove will go right in. You dick. He was doing this. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. Fuck you. They fucked. They did some bullshit. Got away with it. Anyways, fuck you, O.J. Simpson. May you rot in hell, you piece of shit. You should have confessed before you died. You dick. <coughs> um, the next one, I get gonna give all credit to Gomer Kyle, who said, I think it was Gomer Kyle. It was either Gomer Kyle or Jose Trevino. It was one of you motherfuckers. A uh, cheers, Colin Larson, you son of a bitch. Thank you for being here. It's been a while, motherfucker. Cheers. <laughs> uh, Gomer and Kyle or Jose Trevino. I don't know. I'm drunk and high. I don't remember. One of these sons of bitches sending me this on Twitter and tagged us. <laughs> and I'm not going to repeat the joke. <laughs> But for if you know, you know the joke on Twitter. Uh, yeah, and the joke on Twitter is uh, have fun as have fun and fun as hell, you sons of bitches. You make me laugh. Um, I'm gonna repeat the joke. But Gomer, you latched onto something because that shit went viral, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Oh yeah, here we go. None other than. Elisa Jordana has been arrested for fucking domestic uh, abuse, uh, assault, and battery. And if you don't know who this uh, very, she's pretty attractive little girl is. Uh, no, she's not a little girl. She's probably around my age, I think. Uh, maybe a little older. Uh, she used to go out with this guy who looks like King of Queens and shit. And uh, I was, and she was a, she was an ex. Uh, Howard Stern whore slash star that would uh, occasionally come out naked on the show and be interviewed and shit. Uh, and she went out with this comedian guy who looks like King of Queens and shit. And here she is naked with like, I don't know, what is that? Fried rice all over them in a bathtub. And she was actually, the last time we had heard of her, she was actually engaged to that druggy fucking Andy Dick. Ezra Miller's dad, or in, Ezra Miller in the future, in another reality, and shit. Um, so, yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's crazy. Beautiful, crazy girl. We've all known them. At least one or two in our lifetime. Uh, instantly regret it. Uh, but still, fond memories. Anyways. She has gone viral. Because she'd been arrested for, like I said, assault and domestic abuse and a battery. And I got the video to show you, but give you some context of what was going on in all this shit. Because 
you know, she has Instagram Live and she does all these clicks and she makes money on the side from, I don't know, posting pictures in underwear and, and being live and answering questions and shit. Something I'm trying to do, but somehow we only have 500 motherfuckers and YouTube won't let me put commercials on this bitch. So we're not making any money. We're wasting money and electricity every goddamn show. But anyways, she's got it going on, so she makes some money. So she's live and shit. And she decides because her boyfriend, this guy with a lot of money, this fucking guy who's got more money than Andy Dick. Anyone's got more money than Andy Dick. I think I have more money than Andy Dick. All you motherfuckers have more money than Andy Dick. But some guy she's fucking dating now uh, sent money to his mistress. According to her, it could have been a friend. He's helping out. She has children too. Like, you need some money? Let me send you some money. And she send him like a couple of thousand dollars. And this bitch goes on me. You're cheating on me and shit. And so she goes on Instagram live and she calls this girl to call this guy out in front of the girl live on Instagram. I'm about to show you the video of everything that went down, motherfuckers. Here we go. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi. Nudes and you know different sentences that he. Sarah, I'm sorry uh, about this. Don't talk. Don't fucking talk. Uh, yes, Sarah, we're really sorry about this and sending him your way today. Fucking. Uh, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so yeah, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming home. She just like almost broke my nose. She's gonna get her. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Fuck you, cunt. Um. Next time you fucking touch me, I'll fucking dick you. You understand? You understand, cunt? Hey, no, Sarah, hang up. These idiots, she posted your fucking number in her cancer discord. And I was just be polite. Uh, yeah, touch me and I fucking dick your dumbass bitch. I'll fucking dick you. Alisa. Yes? Um, as a woman, the dumb as a cunt, Sarah, the dumb retard in the middle of a street session. And you choose she, she to leave took, the number from the chat. She, she, no, she's a, she's a fucking insane person. She's a she's a fucking fifty-year-old oh, dumb yeah. cunt oh, yeah. oh, in yeah. the middle of the street okay, dancing. Yeah. Yes, Sarah, I heard you had a kid when you were sixteen. That's what he told me about you. Yeah, she had and he a said kid. you're a dumb Mexican. I said she's and a dumb Mexican. And he said you keep showing up. And he says you won't stop texting him. But I saw what? the text. It's the same shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? She's okay. half your age. Can you she's half your age. Delete the number, please. Ow! Ow! Pull over, dumb cunt. Oh. Pull over, dumb cunt. No, ow, ow. No, no, please don't, don't. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, I'll stop. Pull over. Okay, I will. Pull over, dumb okay, cunt. Please, no, no, no. Ah. no, I'm sorry. No, call 911, Sarah. Call 911. No, 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 no. Help. No, please, please. I'm sorry. Call 911. Oh, you're sorry, right? Get the fuck okay, out. Okay, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. He's killing me. Um, so yeah, just a uh, perfectly normal behavior for a crazy bitch. God damn it. Look, these kinds of girls have very, very early signs of craziness. And if you can't catch on from the beginning, you're fucking up. A lot of the first signs come from like, you know, from, from fucking her. All right. If she starts scratching you and he's biting you and taking out blood, don't fuck with that bitch ever again, you idiot. She's crazy. She's a vampire <laughs> or a lizard or something. You don't want none of this shit. She fucking decked him right in the face. That first, you know what? Oh my god. This could have been so worse. Like, 
I think that I would have probably reacted the same way after everything she had been doing. Uh, and did. And you know what? Even with that video, that guy's free. And she's the one arrested. Because even the cops are all like, no, she's the fucking bitch. She's, she posted that chick. Okay, we don't know the story. We just know that that guy sent that chick maybe a few a few thousand dollars. She has a daughter or something. She needed money. I need rent. I fucked you a few months ago. What's up, motherfucker? He sent her some money. This bitch found out. <laughs> Mind you, look at the guys. Guys, she's been fucking in the past. And look who she. Look at the guy she's fucking right now. <laughs> I'm a I'm a play I'm gonna play the video in the background and I'm gonna fucking uh <laughs> mute it for y'all but I'm gonna play it in the background real quick. Hi Sarah, how are you? Oh my god. Um look at the guy she's fucking now. This is like nerd city and shit, and she's hot as fuck. You know what I mean? But he's got a lot of money, that's why she's with him. And she's mad because he's probably sending a friend. Yeah, maybe he used to fuck her, but he's sending her some money because she needs help and has children. She posts her number and her information on her live stream in front of people and then is doing this shit. She doesn't even know what's going on. And you can hear the girl in the background if you listen to the video, but she's actually saying like, hey, as a woman, can you please stop this? Like, and be rational. Like, like, do you even know what's going on? You know, like you hear this. Um, it's funny because the minute he's had enough and fucking grabs her, and you know he's holding onto her hair hard enough that her voice, her tone. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Babe, I'm sorry. <laughs> babe, all of a sudden, look, she dancing there like a little bitch, like she owns him. Hey, he's a little, he's a little bitch, a little nerd. I own him. This pussy owns him. People are donating her five. This is her live stream. People are donating her money. <laughs> As this shit is happening, bros. Wow. You know what? I'm glad this bitch has gone to jail. Right there, I would have had enough. That's it, bitch. You're out, bro. You know, that guy's a, a wuss because I would have been able to drag her across. And I would have fucking sloop, suplex, like just suplexed her out of the car. <laughs> Thrown her to the grass. You're out of here, you whore. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Oh my god. <laughs> That's hilarious though. <laughs> he was trying to though. <laughs> she <laughs> it's funny stuff, bro. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh but she she deserved it, bro. She deserved it. That guy took too much. And she was only doing it because the guy's a wuss and she knew that she could get away with it. So she was being a dick, but she pushed any man. Eventually, man, even a priest will get pushed. You know, any man with a penis and testosterone, you will eventually push someone hard enough and they will fight back. All right. Even a trans woman who's a man originally born. If you push them hard enough, they'll fight back because they have to toss testosterone in them. It's, it's scientific facts. Just say. Just say. Uh, unfortunately, this bitch didn't know about it. Because Andy Dick doesn't have that much testosterone in him. And this fat son of a bitch down here is too lazy. You know, so he doesn't have testosterone enough to beat her ass. But luckily, she had finally found the man who was strong enough to beat her ass down and send her to jail. Cheers! <laughs> All right, all right. We're moving on to more serious subjects here. We've been fucking around too much. Because not only than the head wizard herself, J.K. Rowling's, has gotten some heat once more. And this time, from her own children. Yes. On Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of shit going on. People are all these trans people are trying to sue her for just saying scientific facts that a woman 
who is born with a vagina is a woman. And a man that is born with a penis is a man. That's all she's been saying. And people are trying to sue her for that. And all the courts are, are coming out and saying, yeah, the, the, I mean, you cannot sue her for that. You cannot sue her for that. And so all these, you know, trans people are getting mad and they still want to come after her, you know? And we all know that these, uh, her kids from the Harry Potters, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Stone, or Emma Cuffington, or whatever British name is. I don't remember her name is. Y'all know it. Little British girl. Remind me. Granger. That's the name I know, motherfuckers. They believe in kids trans having trans rights. And I think Daniel Radcliffe is married to a trans woman. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Whatever he believes is fine. In America, your beliefs are, are valid. As long as you respect mine, you son of a bitch. Um, so it's fine, it's fine. All right. But somebody on the Twitter went out and they fucking asked, Hey, I'm just waiting for, for Dan, Ratcliffe, and Emma, Hermione, to give a very public apology. Uh, you know, safe the knowledge that you will forgive them. It, he, he, he tweeted, tweeted, uh, Rowling's. And Rowling's actually replied and said, not safe. I'm afraid. I'm afraid celebrities who coised up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard won rights. We suffered. It's called women's suffrage. Not men with penises who want to dress up like females and put on makeup with braids and bandanas. Fuck you, J.K. Rowling. Not people like that. She's talking about real women with vaginas that you put dicks inside of them. Or dildos, depending on your preference. Some women are gay. They don't want actual penises in them, but they prefer dildos. I don't understand why. It's the same damn thing. Anyways. They use platforms to cheer on this transitioning of minors who can save their apologies for their trans transmutized detransitioners. I don't know how to say these words because I'm not educated. And vulnerable women re reliant on a single sex spaces. She got really smart there. All right. But you all get the jits. She said, fuck you, trans people. So, yes, J.K. Rowling's is saying fuck my kids because they joined this movement. It's shit. That's been attacking me. Even though I gave them years, all their childhoods, their dreams, their fantasies, their, the things they love. I gave it to them. I created them for them. And now they're chastising me for it. For what? For believing in scientific facts. Biology. Shit you should have learned in school. Uh, well, Mrs. Grand Wizard does have one of her children who has a little bit of faith in her. And it's none other than Ron Weasley, Rupert Grint. Because in an interview, they asked him about her and the trans community coming after her and and, and and Harry Potter and Hermione being trans pros and what he believes and shit and, and all the situation and this little ginger boy no man he's a grown ass they're they're grown ass people now they're a legal age it's okay to look at their pictures now fellas uh, if that's what you're into I don't know nowadays you never know he has come out and he has said. Hey, I may not agree with what my auntie believes and her point of views and, sh and even some of the hateful rhetoric that comes out of her mouth and on Twitter. I may not agree with it, but at the end of the day, she's still my auntie and I love my auntie. Yay! 
Ferris to Ron Weasley, this motherfucker probably, like, you know this lady probably molested this little kid when he was young. <laughs> Cheers! This is like the bad side of kids show, except this little guy was like, ah, eh, fuck it, this is fun, I don't give a fuck, this chick is badass, and I don't give a fuck if she doesn't like motherfuckers who <laughs> want to turn into women and call themselves women. I love my auntie, and she loves me. At least once a year when we meet up. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> mm. Alright, alright, I'm done. With this Harry Potter bullshit, you fucking, you fucking guys, and this Weasleys. We're gonna move on to what you guys have been waiting for. And what everyone's been talking about has been, honestly been taking over everything in the news lately. Everywhere I go, this is coming up. And you all know it. But yes, over the weekend... WrestleMania 40 happened again. We watched it on the illegal underground broadcast channel. Search for it next weekend, not this Sunday, April the 21st. We are going to watch the AEW Dynasty pay per view live at 6 p.m. Central. Um, and we watch WrestleMania fucking night one and night two here on the channel and shit. We got away with it. Not here on this channel, but it's the illegal broadcast channel. If you go to the main channel on the day of the pay-per-view, on the main channel, I'll have the link up there. You go to the go to channel, and you go to the channel, it'll have the first thing that's up there that I recommend it. That's going to be it. But it has to be the day of the pay-per-view, and you'll see it. And yes, Cody Rhodes won. He finished his story. It was badass. Everybody loved it. It was perfect booking, and they're calling it the best WrestleMania of all time. We witnessed it live. It was badass. And I keep burping, and I'm sorry for that. It was amazing. It was great. Great booking. Uh, but there was stuff that was said during that weekend that I knew in my heart, was going to have some kind of backlash. Not enough to overshadow the greatness. But eventually it did. And now explain. But none other than the best in the world, Mr. CM Punk, came out and did an interview with Ariel Hawani. That motherfucker. Pro WWE, even though he says he's non biased. Although I loved his MJF interview. MJF was fucking on fire on that interview. How Hawani couldn't fucking nail him at all. But CM Punk was on here and he spoke what no one thought he was going to spoke of about what happened at the all out brawl. And he said the same thing he'd already said. Nothing new we had heard. Nothing new about Tony Khan not being a boss and that, uh, you know, the, the kids are running the show and it's an indie show. There's no structure and everyone does anything they want. No one knows what's going on and things are just made up on the fly because it's an indie show. And that's the way the indies like it. And that's the way they're running AEW, like an indie show. They kind of are. And CM Punk has been used to WWE, even though he didn't like it, he was used to structure. And now he sees what of a fucking mess it is when it's indies, uh, pro indies, with money, with no structure. And he's all like, I think WWE is better. And that's what ended up happening in that relationship. Whatever. I didn't find it interesting because it was nothing that hadn't already kind of been said. But... I was like, oh, he's doing it at the time, WrestleMania. I was like, God damn it, something's going to happen. Something else happened because Triple H did an interview with fucking uh, Pat McAfee. And I'll just play the quick video because there's no other way to explain it. This motherfucker took a dig straight at, even though not mentioning his name. And he took a, he took a dig at AEW real quick. Because Pat, Maff Pat McAfee asked him, because I don't have that part of the video, because I don't want to get copywritten, so I, I shrunk it. But the first part of the video, Pat McAfee asks him, um, 
Back in the day, you were competing with WCW and you were a wrestler. Now you're in charge. How do you think the landscape is? And he goes, well, back in the day, we were competing against WCW and it was like a company versus company. He goes, nowadays, we're, the wrestlers are just competing amongst themselves here in our company. You know, who's better than who? M meaning there's no competition. So that was a jab at AEW, even though he didn't even mention AEW. It was a straight up jab because he basically said, now, right now, our wrestlers are just competing against themselves. There's no, you know, there's no competition. But then this question came up because they asked him about some of these free agents. Because there was Okada. There was Mercedes Monet. Sasha Banks. Um, uh, there was Will Ospreay. Those big talks. Motherfuckers that chose AEW over WWE because WWE wanted them. But they left because AEW does have a lighter schedule. And they don't always wrestle. And these, to be honest, these wrestlers have been literally breaking their bodies. Because the way these young wrestlers wrestle right now, these guys have been breaking their bodies for years already. So they kind of fucking always dreamt of a lighter schedule. In WE, they wrestle five days a week. And they're traveling. Non-stop. It's a non-stop circus. If you look at the schedule of even the house shows, it's a non-stop circus. Every night, a different city, a different town. Um, and it never stops. So it is a grind. But here's what Triple H said about, and everyone assumed it was about Will Ospreay because he was the biggest one. That he did not choose WE. Here it is. It's a different game, it's a different world. If they're not here to be all in on this, like when I see people that come out of, you know, trying to make it, and then they pick the job where they go, well, they work less, the schedule's lighter, I, oh, like, all right, then I'm glad I didn't get you. Okay. Because if, if you're not in it for the grind, at that, at that point, early in your career, you, you have no business being here. And of course, all this doesn't sit well with Tony Khan because Tony Khan is a mark. He's one of us, but with a lot of money and he made this company. And now they're talking trash about the people he's grabbing. That was a bad fucking, I think even Pat McAfee right away tried to stop Triple H from going on, but Triple H kept going because he said, okay. And then Triple H kept going and Pat McAfee was like, all right. Because that was a dig straight at. Because he said, if you don't want to, you know, like, at this point of, uh, he said his career, I think he said his career, uh, I think that was straight at Will Ospreay, and everyone knew it. And Tony Khan already, CM Punk, and then this, he didn't take it lightly, and everyone knows already. On Wednesday, the Young Bucks, part of the storyline, they showed the CM Punk fucking video of Jack Perry. And honestly, there's two things that I don't understand from all of this. Everyone is saying, look, number one, AEW looks horrible for showing this. Especially months after the fact. This is just trying to, number one, get ratings, which it worked. But number two, trying to go at, at Punk. <clears throat> and I will say this. It, it, it backfired. Because I don't like that they did this. None of the wrestlers liked that they showed this. They shouldn't have. Um, but there's one thing that happens here that no one's talking about it. Is that Punk... Punk was lying. No one is saying this. But if you go back and you listen to the Punk interviews, Punk said, I went up to Jack Perry and I said, why do you insist of keeping and doing this social media bullshit and saying that to the camera? And Punk said, Jack Perry said to me, if you don't like it, why don't you do something about it? And then he got in my face and pushed me like that with his chest. 
And he says, and that's when I pushed him and grabbed him in the headlock. And he said, and he swung at me and then I grabbed him in the headlock. But if you watch this and I cut it, I made it shorter. But they have a long conversation. This isn't the two sentences that Punk said were said. They have a long fucking conversation. And Jack Perry never goes into Punk's face or chest bumps him or even lunges at him at all. He doesn't. Punk, Punk he, obviously Jack Perry said something to him and it pissed him off. But Punk was the one who instigating it. Instigated it without it. Jack Perry doing anything or pushing him or doing anything and then off screen CM Punk reaches out and it's not shown because they don't have a camera there but CM Punk is lying CM Punk grabs Tony Khan right here and he says is this the type of shit you're running because that's the story they've said I quit and those guys let him go and he leaves. But we don't see that because there's a wall there. CM Punk was lying the whole time. And no one's talking about that. Now, that's besides so I want to make I wanted to make that clear. Because that's really what happened is that you know, CM Punk was lying. He instigated Maybe, maybe, maybe what he, maybe he said, I fucked your mother or something. And maybe Punk got mad. But if you see, Jack Perry never, even after he pushed him the first time, Jack Perry never even tried to do nothing. I'll do, I'll, I'll move it back. Even after the first shove, Jack Perry didn't even lift a finger towards him. He was still messing with his hair. That's all he was doing. And so... A committee was put in place. They all watched the video, probably with the audio that we don't get to hear. And they all decided that he was in the wrong and that he should be fired. And one of those was Daniel Bryanson, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Danielson. And that guy I trust more than anyone because I think that guy would be more biased about like he wants the best for the company. And if he saw this and saw the audio and he's all like, yeah, I mean, that's what I see. I think even though no one's saying it at WWE, the people in charge are all like, we just have to keep them separate from the people that really don't like him. That's what they're going to do in WWE because they know this can happen back in WWE again. It can. The problem was that in AEW, you have a bunch of, like he said, I work with children. And you do have a lot of younger wrestlers that have a different style. And even when the old guys are trying to teach them stuff, they don't want to listen to it because they're all like, you're old school, man. That's not how we do things nowadays. And the old guys take it personal. That was CM Punk's grudge the whole time. And they eventually escalated into this whole fiasco that we're seeing here. So. It didn't work out for AEW for them to show this. I didn't like it. It doesn't even go with the story. It was a bad idea. Very bad. And somehow, CM Punk ends up winning. As this guy points out. CM Punk has become the first wrestler ever to appear on WrestleMania weekend, on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, and on AEW on the same fucking week. And people were chanting his name at the fucking show when the a a Young Bucks came out. People were going, CM Punk, CM Punk. They fucked up because he's the only one who wins in this situation. It gets even worse because Will Osprey then comes out with Renee Paquette. Renee Paquette, who is friends, really good friends with Hunter and Stephanie, mostly Stephanie. 
But she's friends with Stephanie, Hunter, the kids, and shit. And she doesn't know what's happening. And Renee goes out and Will Ospreay responds to Triple H and says this. I am delivering some of the best professional wrestling matches this world has ever seen, bruv. And normally, right, normally I wouldn't rise to this type of bait. But seeing as the guy that said it is only in the position he is in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. You are in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. Renee Peckett didn't know shit about what was going on. You see it in her face. As soon as this guy says it, when he starts telling him about, you only got in that position because you were grinding on the boss's daughter. You see her face just going, what? Nobody told me he was going to say that. She is literally friends with those people. People she knows. And they put her in that position. That's pretty fucking shitty. And it's crazy that they did this in one show. And I find it hard to believe that WWE is not going to respond in any way. I'm not seeing SmackDown. I usually see the things tomorrow. Um, but on Monday Night Raw, I find it hard that CM Punk and maybe even Triple H won't come out and say something. Like, I don't know. But this is the way I felt. And this is the same way I felt. The same way Tony Schiavone felt. Because he showed it. As soon as they showed all this shit that happened, you literally saw Tony Schiavone going, Why? God damn it. You know what's going through Schiavone's head right now? This is WCW all over again. This is exactly what we started doing, and this is exactly how the company ended. Uh, I'll say one thing about this. Because AEW is not going nowhere. Because Tony Khan has a lot of money. This little man has a lot of money from his dad. More money than McMahon has nowadays. But AW will cease to exist if they lose a television deal that they have with Warner. This kid, even with shitty ratings, this kid can pump money into this company and keep it going for 30, 40 years if he wanted to. He's not going to go broke. They're not going to go broke. They got that Saudi Arabia money. They're not going broke and going to the Jacksonville Jaguars and shit. Who knows what other fucking crazy scams they have. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. The problem is, if they, the ratings get too pathetic, that the network says, we're going to put... Uh, fucking How I Met Your Mother, or Friends, or something else in this time slot. Fuck you. Yeah. That's when AEW dies. Because then what? You're going to have a YouTube show? Bunch of streaming ass? Maybe they go to the USA Network. When, you, when, when WE goes to Netflix, they're going to have to resort to going to the USA Network. I don't know. Who knows? But that's the scenario we're in right now, fellas. I love AEW. I love because the wrestlers, when you come to wrestlers and talent, AEW has it. All right? They really do. WE wrestlers, there's a handful that are amazing. And they are some of the best in the world. A handful. Everyone else are just circus performers. The very least. They are. I'm being perfectly honest. They're badass, perfect support performers, and I like some of their gimmicks. I love them. A lot of them. 
but they're circus performers. These guys are having pay-per-view matches on this show, and this idiot doesn't know how to write good stories or advertise the show. How to attract people to fucking watch what what they actually have? Because they what they have is good. They have the talent. He just doesn't know how to make a good show. And that's where in the problem lies. All right. Enough of this Tony Khan and the wrestling and ass. Cheers, y'all. We got into the wrestling there for a little bit. But we're not done with celebrity ass. Because we're going to get into a little politicalness. Because I, you know what? In this channel, I want to update everyone. The president, this is a presidential year, 2024. I need everybody to register on the internet. Get out there and vote this November. It's going to be very important. Everybody vote. Not me. I ain't going to register. I don't want the government to know who I am. Fuck you. But everyone else should do it. I'm going to update you on the presidential candidates. Let's keep you up to date here on this channel. What's going on? This week, we have President Trump going out there and visiting the heartlands of America. And he visited some of America's urban Chick-fil-A's. He might have done down the street here where I live. I don't know. I didn't go. But here we go for you guys. I have 30 milkshakes and also some chicken. I want to take care of the customers. Uh, is business good? Making a lot of money? Everyone get rich, right? Beautiful. Yeah, can my friend Dom get in one too? Yes. Yes, she's fun right now. Come, come on in. Come on in. Yes, We're going to get rid of Viper. Yeah! He is the worst president in the history of the United States, and he's horrible to the black community. Like it or not, he treats that way the black the community bad. And check out his record in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Check out his record in the 1990s. Your economic was for us. Yes. Well, opportunity. Opportunity. Best job numbers ever. The first step egg. Let's yeah, talk about. It. And again, the, the colleges and universities. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> get the whole thing down. Yeah. So, all over Chick fil A's across America, urban Chick fil A's across America, us Browns like the orange man hunched over with his big fucking Chick fil A belly. And uh, he orders milkshakes for everybody in the restaurant. Everybody wants to take pictures with him. Everybody's saying, hey, fuck Sleepy Joe. Did you hear the people in the background? Fuck Sleepy Joe Biden. We're going to get rid of him. <laughs> the worst president ever. They're saying. In the history, he says he's horrible. He's horrible to black community. They're all saying. They all know the lies. They know the conspiracies. They're telling him, yeah, we know the aliens. They're keeping them in shit. We know the truth, Trump. They know, dude. We know it too. Don't you worry, you motherfuckers. You vote orange. This November, Chick Fil A free for everybody. Uh, only the first five hundred though that show up, motherfuckers. Um, anyways, not for me from Trump. I ain't paying for shit. Uh, I'll be there. I'll sleep. I'll sleep the day before. Camp out just to get a Chick Fil A for free. Fuck yeah. Uh, he looks very powerful, hunched over there. Like he he looks like a wizard or some kind of like fucking like you know one of these like. Like, end bosses, you know, like, these guys is in charge, you know, in the, in the movie and shit. Uh, yeah, 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 with his hair. Chick-fil-A's, urbans, browns, across America, we support this man. Everyone's there for him. That's what they say. Um, that, that's what's going on on the, on the right side of the country, as they like to say. But on the left side, meanwhile, on the left side of the country, the current president continues with his everyday activities. Here's a few of them for you. Third, but the next question, who I call on next? Hang on a second, I got my list here. Hang on, I apologize. 
Third, what is the next question? Who I call on next? Hang on a second. I got my list here. Hang on. I apologize. Ah, this dumb, senile, incompetent, shitting in his diapers, son of a bitch, is embarrassing us in front of that goddamn Japanese live on television. It's, you know how embarrassing it is as an American to go to Japan and find out that the beautiful city you grew up in that's so sophisticated with plumbing and fucking, you know, skyscrapers is actually ass compared to any city in Japan that's clean, sanitized, perfect. There's no hookers or drugs anywhere. It's a utopia over there. Technology, there's holograms, Tony Stark and kind of shit. And then we, this motherfucker comes over here to visit and this son of a bitch can't even fucking read. I'm going to fucking play the sound for you again. This idiot. Hang on a sec. I got my list here. Hang on. I apologize. Third. For the next question, who, who I call on next? Hang on a sec. I got my list here. Hang on. I apologize. I think we all need to go buy bomb shelters because next week we're going to get kamikaze Japanese attacking American soil because they realize that this man is running the fucking country. God damn it. Y'all better fucking vote this November. I don't care what you vote for, but you better not vote for these idiots that are currently in power. Cheers. Oh. But I am going to need one more beer. Because we are about to get into it. The nitty. Gritty. Diddy. And it is looking really grim for this man. More accusations, more lawyers and shit. He's trying to play it cool. He's trying to play it cool. And go around and bicycling and jogging and living his life like normal. But inside, he knows it's over, folks. And a man who just doesn't give a fuck is Mr. Curtis Jackson because he continuously continues to troll. And he posted, you know, that video that we po we posted. He, we, he came to our channel, you all, this son of a bitch. And he stole this video without even giving us credit. And he posted it on his Instagram with Miami. Young is admitting to being a whore. She says, I'm a whore with a capital W. I'm a whore. What do you mean by that? I mean, I'm a whore. Give me money for my body. That's basically what she's saying. 50 Cent went ahead and posted this video and he said, it's okay to be a whore. Just make sure you're being overpaid. $250,000 a month, bitch. See a sucker? Catch a sucker? Suck a sucker dry. Oh, yeah. You go, girl. LSW. LOL. At Branson Cognac. At Lemic Midori. Some fucking liquors he owns and shit. Fucking 50. <laughs> oh, this guy don't give a fuck. People been... You know, went in the comments to try telling her shit. And so she came out and finally responded. And she said, hey, these allegations are lies. These are courts. Some, some fucking homosexual guy is just saying this in court. This has nothing to do with me. And it's going to be brought to light soon enough, you motherfuckers. So she's still remaining innocent. But 50 Cent is here to expose motherfuckers for the truth by trolling. 
And 50 came out and he said, hey, get ready. Because Diddy's already accused every one of his, like, conspirators. Because the last time he had a birthday party last year, or a few months ago, he had a birthday party. The son of a bitch, he had a big orgy, but everybody came over. And the day after, he was with his son live on Instagram. And he decided to, to because everybody signed their name with blood or cum, something like that. On, on a little, when they went into the fucking party. And so, he wanted to fucking name everybody who came to the party. And so, fucking Diddy, uh, fucking 50 cents already. Here it is, Diddy's accomplice list. Here it is, folks. Everybody who's been involved with this fucking homosexual, uh, child molester wrangler, fucking sex addict, fucking drug addict and molester of women and, and, and children. Here we go. Okay, are you ready? Drum roll. on for a long time there's a lot of names he said Rita Wilson was one of the last ones that came out there shit. Jessica Alba broke my heart right there uh yeah a lot of people went to this orgy and I don't really want to say that everybody who was mentioned was at this orgy supposedly having sex drugging women and participating in underage debaucheries with teenagers I'm not saying that they were doing that just saying that they were possibly there watching other people partake in this, including Diddy, Cuba Gooding Jr., Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iovine, Jay-Z, Beyonce, people like that, statures and shit. You know, a bunch of other Jewish white motherfuckers from the industry. Who knows? I don't know. Ryan Seacrest, Keenan Thompson. You never know. All these motherfuckers are famous. I'm just saying. Just throwing names out there. I'm not saying I know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Just saying the names. Um, 50 Cent does want to congratulate other trolls like him. Because he says, hey, I found this video. I don't know who made this. But this is the shit. And here's the video that he even po reposted. <laughs> Shoot me in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, need you shoot me in the elevator? Ah, and then a fucking everybody who's there. <laughs> Make meals there and shit. Bunch of other motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, fucking crazy, dude. Um, but since we are talking about McMill, another guy who has been mentioned in these fucking allegations and these ditty orgies, gay sexual shits that they've been throwing and underage teenagers. McMill 
It's coming now, and he's uh oh sorry about that. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons because I'm drinking hot. He's coming out and he's saying, Hey, this some bullshit. Because oh, I'll just read it directly. I don't even need to I don't need to say it in my language. I'll say it in his. He put I don't believe no Diddy story once they lied about me now. Anybody try to sexually assault me, it'd be with a bang out on the spot. Oh, yeah, because this guy likes it in the ass. How y'all don't know that, motherfuckers? He says, I don't, I don't dare. But y'all confusing my son. He's 12 and shit with people saying his dad is gay. It's sick now. Ouch, y'all. So fuck it. LOL. So I, I think this is kind of funny to him because he did put LOL at the end. I don't know. I'm confused. Um, because it sounds like he's talking about he's being gay, because he says, if anybody tried to sexual assault me, I'd be out to bang it out on the spot. Let's do it, motherfucker. That's what he's saying right there. How, how do you all don't know that? And he says, but you're confusing my son. I think he wants his son to make up his own mind about his sexuality before you all confuse him with this transsexual bullshit. I think they, he's, he's gay, but he's anti-trans, and he's down with Diddy. I think that's what's going on. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I feel like I'm deciphering some of this too. Yeah, anyways. Mick Millie doesn't want you all talking about shit about his son. 50 Cent, you motherfuckers, stop trolling him. That's basically what he's saying. Uh, Diddy's in for it, and he's in for it for sure. And he's going to get it, just like everyone else has been getting it. But let's finish the weekly pop culture breakdown. With the best thing of the week. The Yeze. And yes, the Yeze was seen with his wife half his age, hotter than his ex-wife, looked exactly like her, except natural. And she went out with um a see-through rag wrapped around herself. With no underwear and no bra. And you could see her tits and her coochie and her asshole. And Ye was completely covered. Trench coat, baggy trench coat jeans, everything. If he rains, he's ready if it rains. He even has a hood. Um, God bless this woman and God bless the Ye Zay for blessing us with their fucking vision of what the future should be like. Imagine if. Everyone down the street, every man's completely covered and every woman's exposed. Walking down the street, fellas. Yeah, this is the future. That's all I'm saying. They blessed us with more of the future. Because later on, she came out with, um, I guess, like, a shirt that was cut down the middle and nothing else. For a second there, I thought she was even barefoot, but no, she's wearing heels. Uh, but I will say one thing. They're all wearing white, by the way. I will say one thing. What's going on with my Yeze? He looks fucked up. He looks like he's on it or something. Like, he's, like, his jaw is drooping and shit, and his eyes are fucking... And you know what? She kind of even looks like a robot, too. I mean, what if they're not even real? You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers like make clones and then send them out to take pictures while they're somewhere else and shit. Enjoying their millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, 400 million dollars to be exact. Um, damn, those are some good titties. That's all I'm going to say. They're nice. I mean, they're very natural and shit. Cheers, y'all. This is good stuff. Cheers to the Yeze and Bianca and Sorry showing us the future and shit. We're done with the weekly pop culture breakdown. Cheers to the celebrity ass of this week. All right, let's get into the weekly comic book nerd shit. Comic book nerd shit. 
And this week it was announced that the Running Man reboot or remake is happening with Edgar Wright as director and writer and a uh, Glenn Powell as the lead. I've seen this guy in Top Gun and some other movies. I think he was Rooster or some guy. No, he wasn't Rooster. He was... I forget what this guy was. He was good. And Maverick and, I, and the other movies. He's alright. But he's going to play the Arnold character. I'm going to tell you one thing, man. I love The Running Man. I hold it here in my heart. Because I watched that movie when I was a kid. And I wasn't supposed to be watching that movie. I'll just tell you like that. Uh, I watched it without my parents' permission. And uh, a friend of mine loaned it to me on my VHS. And then I, when my parents went out. They weren't home. I watched it. This movie's a shit. It's badass. I love it. And uh, I don't know if Rosie Pettis was in it. It was some chick that was hot. Some Mexican chick. Like Rose, It looked like Rosie Pettis. She had big titties and shit. Um, but this movie was badass, bro. And uh, um. I don't want to judge it too much. I do. I, I hate the trend about, ah, let's take something that was cool in the 80s and remake it. I hate that trend. All right. I really, really hate it. It's a big trend Hollywood's doing nowadays, and it pisses me off. I just saw the Roadhouse movie uh, with Jalen Hall and then Conor McGregor. And that little girl from Puerto Rico or Cuba, where the fuck she's from, uh, Melchor or whatever her name is. Um, it's not bad. It's not good. I'll just say it like that. It's very badly written. There's a lot of plot holes and stuff that is not finished or explained. It just abruptly also ends. Uh, with no resolution almost. Um, it's just, uh, but... It's a fun ride. I'll give you that. It's a fun ride. It's full of actions, you know, and shit. Um, so I don't know. This could go either way. I want to wait till I see a trailer of this running man by Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright is a good director, and I think he's the one who was originally going to do the first Ant Man movie that was later rejected because. Kevin Feige wanted to do some other ass. And this guy said, I want to do something that's good. They said, no, you can't do nothing that's good. You got to do what Marvel says and Disney. And he said, fuck you, you woke pieces of shit. And he left. That's what happened. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I mean, I, there's no nothing official. That's just a rumor. That's what happened. I don't know. I'm going to wait to see a trailer before I judge the shit out of this. That's all I'm going to say. So, for now, I'm going to cheers to The Running Man because I actually love The Running Man. It's a badass fucking Arnold movie. And if you haven't seen it, download it on YTS.MX with your WinSquad VPN. You will not regret it. Cheers! <sighs> Moving on to some nerd ass. I'm talking about murder nerd ass. But now it's being said that Sidney Prescott... Nev Campbell will be the main character in Scream 7, even though they were passing the mantle on to the new Mexican little girls and shit. Quit on you, because you don't respect that they want to free Palestine from the Jewish well, Zionist authoritar that's trying to take over the Middle East by force. Sons of bitches. Anyways. Nev Campbell's a star now. She's the main character. Courtney Cox is coming back. And that other guy is going to come back. Not Dewey. Some other guy. Some other fucking guy. Handsome guy. Still now older. But gray hair. He's coming back. A detective. But now they're saying that Sidney Prescott. Will have a husband. And two kids. And they're currently holding auditions. Because they're rewriting everything on the fly. Because they got to get this movie in production. Because the little Mexican girls quit on the last one. So they're rewriting everything. And so now the story is going to revolve about the killer coming after her family. 
What did I say last time? Oh, what are you gonna do? Oh, it's the killer wants to go after Sydney. It's already been done. Who is it gonna be? Oh, it was the brother of the little kid. Oh, that already happened. Oh, who's it gonna be? Oh, it's gonna be the uncle, stepdad of Cotton that was twice removed from the family and he's upset because he wasn't part of the book that was written by the other bitch and didn't come out in the movie that was filmed in the other movie that they were doing and he's just upset because he's not in it at all and now he wants to kill somebody and he remembers this girl was from the beginning that's what it's gonna be fucking ass the mo cash money grab not gonna be any good that's all I'm going to tell you right now. That's all I'm saying. Cheers to this ass. Moving on to disappointing ass. But the Jon Snow show is officially canceled. Fucking Shit. Uh, I shouldn't be too upset because they just said last week and we talked about it, Duncan Egg is in production already and they cast it to characters. But no. Fucking Game of Thrones. Jon Snow himself, Kit Harrington, said in an interview that he didn't like any of the ideas. They couldn't come up with a good story. And so now, 100%, it is dead and done. We're not continuing the story of Game of Thrones. Jon Snow is going to go to the wilderness in the fucking blizzard forever like an idiot. Khaleesi's uh, the dragon took her away, I don't know, to fucking eat her corpse. We never will find out what the fuck happened. Everything's done. That's it. It's over. Fucking ass. That could have been a good show. Khaleesi comes back as the eyes, the new ice queen with her new ice fire dragons or whatever. I don't know. Something badass. But no, no, no. George R. Martin is too fat and fucking lazy to finish the stories or come up with something sensible for Kit Harrington, who, by the way, has disappeared from Hollywood since that goddamn show ended. And now, because of George R. R. Martin, he's a nobody. I hope he doesn't get that little redhead pregnant, because they're not going to have money to raise a millionaire star child. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers to this ass that pisses me off. To some more shit I don't give a fuck about. They fucking showed some behind the scenes of some fucking wires or some metal ass, some clay. I don't know what this is. A f f Five Nights at Freddy's Part 2 that's currently in production. And right away, all the fucking five-year-old nerds that are grown up and are now 21 are coming out and saying, I know that character, and it's this hideous, disgusting-looking thing that I don't know if that's a dick or a leg that's coming out of it. It's just a bunch of metal fucking arms and legs coming out of two heads. And that's apparently what this asshole over here is working on. So, yeah. I don't give a fuck. I don't even know what I'm looking at or what this is called. This is called fucking dumbass shit. We're moving on! God damn it. Can you tell there was not a lot of news this week? Uh, Paramount or Nickelodeon or one of those fucking studios. I didn't do enough research to know, but one of them announced at CinemaCon that they are officially working on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action Last Ronin adaptation. And it will be rated R. So we're finally going to see a turtle dick go inside of April O'Neil's pussy. That's the current rumor. And if the story from the comic books is true, 
The turtle's gonna be Michelangelo because in this alternate reality or future, the Shredder completely takes over the world and the Foot Clan and all this ass. And they kill all the turtles in Splinter and the only turtle that's left is fucking Michelangelo. And he carries all the weapons of all the turtles. He no longer wears orange because he's no longer happy like the sunshine. He is angry and depressed and more like Raphael. And uh, now he calls himself the Ronin and he wears fucking like this. He looks like this with a cape like Batman or some ass. And uh, and yeah, he's just uh, and he also he talks to the ghosts of his dead brothers. They haunt him. Maybe he's crazy. He's imagining it. But this is happening in a live action movie. It'll probably be a CGI fuck fest because there's no way in hell they're going to go back to doing the puppets like Jim Henson did because they're too pussies to try to even attempt to do something creative like that. So we're going to get some fucking CGI fuck fest just like we did from the fucking uh, uh, fucking Transformers guy, whatever, Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. So yeah, I don't know. This might still end up being ass. That's all I'm going to say, even though the backdrop of it and the story is badass. It might still be ass in the end. Cheers to ass, apparently. It was also announced by one of these studios, one of these Asian motherfuckers there at CinemaCon. I don't know who it was. It was just some guy, but he went up there on the stage. And they came out and he said, hey, we are making a live action Digimon movie. Yep. Another CGI fuck fist that's not going to use practical effects or puppets or anything realistic. It's going to be a bunch of kids in front of a green screen. Here's a little fucking green ball talk to it and shit show no emotions or any kind of facial features nothing we're not gonna suck in a bunch of rocket raccoons all together and shit this is gonna be ass from the start and who knows which version of digimons they're gonna adapt because the only good version of Digimons that ever existed is literally the first iteration that came out in the Fox Kids translated from the Japanese version This probably wasn't even the first one in Japan but it was the first one in America and that's the one we know where Ty and a bunch of the other dumb kids first go into the digital world and these are the ones but I bet you anything they're not even going to adapt this and they're going to choose some other fucking later either third fourth generations that only fucking woke ass fuck kids know some homosexual non-binary kids find some fucking blob that doesn't even know if it's a male or female or Digimon human or whatever the fuck it wants to call itself it's confused it's going to be a thing with a virus in it and that's the version we're going to end up seeing for fuck's sakes. So yeah, I hope you all are excited for this DG1 Digital Monsters bunch of bullshit they're gonna bring to you. Cheers! Fucking dick. Trailers were shown at the CinemaCon. All these privileged motherfuckers that have nothing better to do than spend their hard-earned money on fucking bullshit thinking they're gonna get laid with some fucking fine-ass bitch at the cinema con, but they're not a bunch of fucking nerds that look exactly like them and they're too afraid to talk to each other so no one gets laid. Um, they showed a trailer for Sonic 3. And they said that, yeah, they show Shadow the Sonic the Hedgehog, Shadow with a bike and all that ass. But they don't show him talking because they haven't casted the actor who's going to voice the character. So they don't show in the trailer. But they did say that we finally see Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik looking like Dr. Robotnik. Now, have y'all been watching this ass of a series? He has slowly transformed into it. Where in the first one, he didn't look nothing like it. He had hair and everything. He barely had a mustache. But at the end of the movie, his hair got blown off. And he looked like this. You know, with these glasses and, and long mustache. And he was bald. 
And so it continued with him like that. And now in this next one, they say in the trailer, when we see him, he's going to be huge and fat, just looking exactly like Dr. Robotnik. And he's going to look at the camera and said, I've been eating a little too much carbs. And shit. That's what he's going to say. Uh, but yes, he's going to free Shadow the Hedgehog. And of course, they're going to fight with Knuckles and Tails and Sonic and motorcycles and ass. But nobody knows who's going to be the voice of Sh Shadow the Hedgehog. I think it's pretty obvious who it's going to be. It's going to be none other than Chris Pratt and this fucking annoying. I don't even want to change my voice. Hello, I'm Chris Pratt. Fucking voice. Uh, whatever it's going to be, I don't care. I want to see these trailers, but none of these pussies took their phones. So I have nothing to show you guys, but a bunch of lies people spread on the internet that might not even be true. Hopefully they are. They sound real and they sound cool. Hopefully Jim Carrey's going to be fat Dr. Robotnik, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. And that's the truth. All right. We're going to move on to another announcement. That was made at this fucking CinemaCon ass that they showed. And they said that Monarch Legacy of Monsters has been renewed for season two. They released this little promo with all the monsters and Godzilla and Kong and all this cool shit. I gotta tell you, man, because I think it was like, I think we reviewed eight or ten episodes. I'm not quite sure i don't remember been a while and i drink and smoke a lot um but i will say this i don't think um it wasn't bad and i kind of want to see a season two they could show a bit more monsters but i know this series try to focus more on a human story and the human story was fucking good i'm not gonna lie it was good enough that it had me hooked on it. And I wanted to know what was going to happen next. And I was guessing what was going to happen next. I got some of the things right. Some of the things wrong. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm excited for season two. It's coming. If they spend as much money and make it look good, uh, I'm down. And I know people will be down to see more of this. Hopefully they involve more of Kong and more of the other monsters. Maybe in between the other movies we've already seen. Show us some more shit we don't know about. All I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, moving on to some DC good ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> the only thing I want to talk about DC this week is the only thing anybody's talking about, and then it's none other than Joker Folia Docs trailer. Premiered motherfuckers. And it's obvious there's gonna be a lot of a lot of singing and dancing. You they show it straight up in the trailer. They, they they don't show the songs or them singing, but I promise you there's gonna be singing and dancing. This is this is gonna be an artsy, fancy, crazy ass. You know what this even Reminds me of, even though it didn't have it a lot. Uh, Natural Born Killers. I love Natural Born Killers. This has, didn't, I mean, I, I know they're going to say, ah, how, can you, how can you compare it? But I'm comparing it because it's like, it's going to be trippy where they're going to be talking to each other in the street. And then they're going to, like, all of a sudden in their heads, they're like in the ballroom and their clothes are different. It's gonna be, and it's gonna be going back and it's gonna be fucking good. I thought I was gonna hate this. I thought this might be ass. This, my friends, is going to be good. I already love the poster. But damn, this looks amazing. I want to see this movie. And just the very last shot where she grabs her fucking lipstick uh, and, and smudges it across the glass. And the camera's just looking. It doesn't even move. 
he's the one that moves and he moves right in the perfect position and then smiles and I'm like, this whole movie is going to be a fucking work of art. Nothing to do with Joker, the origins, DC, comic books, or nothing related to the way it's supposed to be. But this by itself is going to be even better than the first movie. I'm calling it right now. This is Warner's cash cow. All of a sudden, Warner's going to be like, Oh, yeah, we're rich, bitch. Two billion dollars. Mm. I'm definitely going to see this. I love when Gaga smears the blood. Just the way he did in the first movie, she smears the blood across her. Oh. Oh, my God. This movie's gonna be so good. That's all I'm gonna say. If you fucking hate on it, hate on it. But you have no idea, I can tell already. This movie's a work of art. And I'm only showing you just a little bit of the trailer, but I'm showing you some of the best shots that it's like. This is gonna be a cinematic masterpiece. And they're all old school songs. There's about 15 songs. Oh my god. This is going to be great. I can't wait. And all while they're dancing and having these fantasies, they're probably killing people. When they snap out of it, there's going to be dead people all over the place. It's shit. Ah, oh, this is going to be a beautiful movie. Cheers to Todd Phillips and Warner. Not James Gunn, because James Gunn has nothing, nothing to do with this. Because if he did, this was probably be confusing and ass. Fuck you, James Gunn. Cheers to the Joker. Fully a vox. Cheers. Let's move on to the not Marvel ass part of the joint. Move on to the big one. Kang. The woman beater. Jonathan Majors. Was sentenced. To one year. In counseling. So that he could learn. Why it is important. Not to beat. On. White women. That are half your size, half your age, defenseless, powerless. Why not to beat on them? That's all he gets, folks. One year counseling. Show up and listen to somebody tell them some shit about like women are good, women are powerful, and you gotta respect them. Maybe for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 25, 15. Let's just say 15 minutes a day, a week, one once a week. Nah, nah, he's rich and he's a celebrity. Once a month, he goes for 15 minutes and he listens to somebody tell him about women's empowerment and shit. And then he goes home. And that's it, folks. Let me ask you all one fucking question to ask yourselves. If this exact crime, as they call it, and situation happened to you and the cops and everything was involved and you went to court and this little girl and all this ass and you were found guilty, do you for a second think that you would get one year of counseling for these crimes, alleged, alleged crimes. No, you'd be in fucking jail right now, I promise you. For the shit he got guilty of, you would be in jail right now. Getting a finger or worse in the ass. And if you were smart enough, you'd be giving it. But, yeah, it's up to you. <sighs> this is what Hollywood's like, you know? For the rich and privileged with money. 
How much are you willing to pay? How much cum are you willing to swallow? To continue with this kind of lifestyle and privilege. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? I'm not going to cheers to this woman beater. She came to conquer. I will say if Marvel brings him back to be Kang and continues the story with that face. And I don't I honestly I don't know how they cannot because they just showed us right here in this one scene I'm showing you hundreds and thousands of Kangs all looking like him. How are you going to recast him and say, oh, the one guy who looked different. He's the most powerful one of them all. And he kills them all. Fuck you. Is that the lame explanation you're going to give me? Ken Feige, Marvel and Disney, Roberto Iger. It probably is. So get ready for that piece of shit. Ah, uh, the CinemaCon happened, and all these privileged nerds saw these trailers, and what was shown to them was none other than a few minutes of Captain America, a Brave New World, and here is a sneak peek of Anthony Mackie facing off, and I zoomed in on the picture there, sorry about that, it looks weird, but it's like the zoomed in right next to him. Of Harrison Ford as General Thunderbolt Theodore Ross. And guess what, fellas? He looks nothing at all like General Thunderbolt Theodore Ross. Doesn't have a mustache. His hair is a buzz cut. It's already bad enough his facial features is not going to look like William Hurt. So why do you give him a completely different fucking look? And what he used to look like. Or even what he should look like in the comic books. Ridiculous. Anyways, let me give you a quick rundown and description of what supposedly was shown to these assholes here at CinemaCon. And the trailer starts with Theodore Ross having an assassination attempt by a sniper. And the sniper is thwarted by Anthony Mackie. And it turns out that the sniper, uh, Captain America, Anthony Mackie, now with the vibranium wings and all that ass, he saves the day. And when he catches the sniper, it turns out that it's Isaiah Bradley, the black old man from... The Falcon and the Winter Soldier show that he was the original super soldier and shit that they made a bunch of them and shit. Well, he's like a Maturian candidate and somebody said a word to him and his programming came back and he went after Theodore Ross to kill him. Kind of like Bucky. They said these words and he transformed to kill this guy. And so now they're showing us in this trailer that this movie is no longer the Serpent Society and a bunch of Hulk and the leader and a bunch of shit like that, but kind of trying to tell us, oh, this movie is just like uh, the Winter Soldier. This movie's espionage and mystery and wondering what the fuck is going on and shit. And that's what supposedly was shown during this. It wasn't really a trailer. It was like a short scene. And also Anthony Mackie during this scene tells Thunderbolt Ross, I want to rebuild the Avengers. You know, because the Avengers are not allowed because of the Sokovia Accords and all this shit. And Thunderbolt Ross tells him, who do you think you are? You're no Steve Rogers. You're black. I mean, I, I wasn't there, but they say that's what that's what happens. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? It sounds cool, but I want to see it for myself. And if they change the whole movie, then what the hell it is this movie going to be about? 
Where does the leader and the Red Hulk come into this? Even though there's no Bruce Banner in this. And no She-Hulk in this. Why do you have Hulk villains in a Captain America movie? Makes no sense. But we'll see what ass Kevin Feige comes up with. That's all I'm going to say. I do want to get into the ass that I didn't show last week. And I do apologize for that. But the Daredevil Born Again. Spoilers. Frank Castle was back. He was shown on the set. Bloody. Covered in blood. With Daredevil with a darker suit. So that means that there was a lot of lights in the last one. And there was also, they showed uh, what seemed to be a lot of, uh, like, police officers, I guess. Uh, in With, like, Punisher gear. This guy over here looks like fucking, uh, what's his name? Carl Weathers. This guy is wearing, is a police officer, but he's wearing a Punisher emblem. And so they are going with the story that policemen, SWAT team members, they're going rogue and they're thwarting crimes and they're wearing the Punisher logo. And Frank Castle, the Punisher, doesn't like that. And so that's why he comes out and he tries to stop these assholes. Because he doesn't like that they're using a symbol and shit. Um, it's kind of cool. It looks weird in the context because you see them in the video and they're crouched and they're crawling and shit. And you're wondering what the fuck is going on. But I mean, I don't know what's going on. They're covering their ears too. Like, it's like, why would they be covering their ears? It doesn't make any sense to me. Both of them are doing it. Uh, but well, I guess when the show comes out, here's another thing they said about the show. The show's down filming, done filming for now. But they said they only filmed nine episodes instead of filming 18 for two seasons. They only filmed nine. So they only filmed one season. Even though they already had 18 episodes filmed, they refilmed only nine episodes. That's worrisome. We also got some pictures of Wilson Fisk, Vincente D'Onofrio, and this lady who plays Vanessa Fisk is back. They fired the new Vanessa Fisk, and they rehired the old lady to come back, which is badass. But you know what pisses me off is that Vicente Onofrio is not even wearing his fast suit, fat suit. And he looks skinny as fuck. I know it is supposed to add 10 pounds and shit. But it just doesn't even look right. That's all I'm going to say. This, to me, is worrisome. And it kind of disappoints. Uh, I'm hoping this is all pre-production. And maybe they're going to make him look wider. And uh, he'll look, you know, because he looks, even his neck, it's like thin, like, oh my god, he, it looks like he lost even more weight than the last time he was on. Uh, I really, really hope this is fixed uh, in pre-effects or whatever it is they do to add some, some weight on this man, you know, to make him look more like Kingpin. And the one we've already seen is all I'm saying. Anyways, back to more ass. Actually, this is some good promising stuff that I was waiting for. But we finally get a good look from the theaters of what Wolverine is going to look like in the Deadpool movie. And it looks pretty fucking badass. One complaint. But it might just be the cup and the drawing. I don't think these fins or ears, whatever you want to call them, I don't think they're long enough. That's just me. That's just me. Here's another look from another cutout from the movies. They look a little longer here. And I like how the, the eyes look a little fucking darker. I love the white eyes that they gave them just like Deadpool. I love it. 
Um, I want to see it in live action because it's not the same seeing a poster or seeing, you know, a picture from the theaters. There's a t-shirt that was shown and it says we are Deadpool. And it shows the variants of Deadpool's that I guess will be part of his team. All the other ones that are rumored to come out will probably be killed right away. Like Taylor Swift as Lady Deadpool. A bunch of other Deadpools. They'll be killed right away. These are the main ones that will survive and be his team. It's going to be the little dog that's all deformed with alopecia and shit. The baby Deadpool. The kid Deadpool. And then Headpool is what they're calling this. And it's just a skeleton head. With a mask, and it looks fucking crazy and hideous, and... You know what this reminds me of? Of that puppet, that guy who has the puppets, the stand-up guy who has the puppets. It reminds me of that guy who has the, 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 the Arab skeleton. That's what this... Akbar, Akbar, or whatever the fuck his name is. That's what this reminds me of, and shit. Um, it kind of looks fucked up and weird. And he's just going to be flying around because the helicopter on his head makes him fly around. I really hope the special effects are good in this movie because this might look like ass if this doesn't look good. Because uh, this looks fucking crazy. That's all I'm going to say. That's it for the Deadpool. Fucking shit. Make it into the main ass. And the final ass. Of the week. And then and it's none other than. X-Men 97, motherfuckers. Episode 6, I think. I don't even fucking remember. Because I'm high and drunk. But we go to Genosha. And finally. This episode gets good. So Genosha, of course, they get all these cameos of all these weird mutants, and we see Dazzler and Nightcrawler and all these fucking mutants leaving in peace and shit. And Leech and the Morlocks, and, and, and of course, the only ones that go is Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit. And we find out that fucking Madeline Pride is there, and she's one of the council there in Genosha. And uh, and there's other councils in Genosha. Um, some of the councils include the fucking... Uh, oh, yeah, we, some of the cameos. There's multiple man. I'm showing them right now. Sorry about that. I'm jumping ahead. Cloak and Dagger come out. And Dazzler out of nowhere, who should have been the original one, and she comes out uh, just for a little tease and shit. But they do show that the council in Genosha... Yeah, it consists of Emma Frost and uh, Sebastian Shaw from the fucking uh, uh, Hellfire Club. And um, Mor Moira McTagrin, who's not even a mutant. She's a human. And Banshee. And uh, Calypso from the fucking uh, Morlocks is the part of the council. And Madeline Pryor, who was the supposed Jean Grey, but the clone. And they all ask Magneto, who shows up, to make sure, like, let me see if you guys are not terrorists, because I'm part of the X-Men, and I'm a good guy now. So he goes, and they ask him, this is your vision? We're just mapping out what you had envisioned? And shit. And, uh, and then they fucking went and, and, and asked him, do you want to be king? We need a representative, because we're going to be a nation, and we want you to be king. And so Magneto, out of nowhere, says, well, I'll be king, but only under one condition. If you let me pick my queen, and I pick Rogue. 
And Rogue pretty much at first accepts. And she breaks up with Gambit and tells him the story. And they show the shit from the Savage Land from the comic books. Which is crazy because that was never established in the old shit. But they show it. And she breaks up with Gambit. And Gambit uh, pretty much is all like, fine, well, fuck you, bitch. We can't ever fuck. And I'm tired of being teased. I'm going to go find some bitches that I can actually fuck. And he says, goodbye, mon ami. And he leaves. And fucking Rogue just cries and shit. And then crazy, dude. Very few people notice this, but I saw it right away. The Watcher is watching all of this. It's in the sky right there. I paused it. The Watcher, and this is a cool little Easter egg that they put in there. The Watcher is watching this fucking from from, from everything. So it kind of tells you like something crazy is about to happen because this guy says I watch and, and watch certain of like the big time events and shit. And so this guy shows up and it's something like something's a, something crazy is about to happen. Uh, but then we switch to the story. And we find out that Jean is over here being isolated and like she and Scott are having issues. The real Jean. And she's sad. And then Logan goes up to her and he's trying to comfort her. And she turns around and she kisses him because she says, I think he's like Cyclops is still in love with her. And so then she wants to be with Logan and Logan tells her, no, you're Jean Grey. You're not that bitch. And, you, and he's Scott. You don't belong with me. And I was like, this is hardcore because this is what the old show was. It had like adult themes to it. And this is what this is. Uh, this is like, I'm telling you, this is the best episode I've seen. Everything else has been trashed. This one's really good. This is more reminiscent of X-Men 94 back in the day. Um, But yes. So, you know, he reminds her like, you know, even though I want you, you're the real Gene. And the real Gene likes Cyclops, not me. Bitch. Uh, and so he reminds her. But Cyclops at the same time is being interviewed by these humans because, you know, they're talking about like, uh, they're trying to give like the X-Men uh, mutants, uh, mutant kind a good look. So they have interviews and shit. And he loses it. And he tells her all pissed off, you know what? You're lucky that there's good mutants like me and the X-Men. Because if it wasn't for uh, for us, you motherfuckers would all be dead right now. Because we're the ones protecting you and shit. And he walks off in the interview, all storms off. And I'm like, holy shit. I thought, holy shit. Because in the comic books, Cyclops, there's a fucking age or period of time in the comic books where he fucking um, turns evil. And he starts thinking like Magneto that the humans, if they, they just want to kill us, and the only way is to protect mutants is to fucking destroy humans. And so he becomes like Magneto. He becomes the new Magneto. He becomes the bad guy in the comic books for a while. Um, and he has this Phoenix Force too. It's crazy. And I wonder, are they going to go that route? Also, they're already teasing that he's kind of like getting these bad feelings and elements like Magneto vibes to him. I hope I hope they do that. That's fucking sick as fuck. Uh, but then we see him talking to Gene. And he's saying, I'm sorry I blew up on the fucking... On the... the on the reporter. And I'm angry. And she says, do you miss our son? And she says, I do. Tell me about him. And she's talking. And she, they start kissing. And I was just confused. Because I was like, because I know they're talking about the other. But I'm thinking the son is Madeline's. Like, what is she talking about? And then all of a sudden, somebody's all like, what's going on? And everything goes astral plane and Gene is right there. And it turns out that Scott is actually astral planing with Madeline Pryor. Having like little, little fucking rendezvous, making out with her, talking to her and shit. So like in a way, he's fucking cheating on fucking Gene. And I'm all like, holy shit, like, this is what I'm telling you. This is what the old X-Men was serious and, and really smart. Like, this is the only episode that's been good. I was all like, holy fucking shit. So he's like, psychically been cheating with her. And this bitch is like, you think I wouldn't find out, you son of a bitch. 
and she gets all mad and was you know they go their separate ways uh but then she feels jean gray when she's getting mad at scott for what he's doing she feels something and so does madeline Pryor on the other side and what's crazy is we see cable show up over there in genosha and he's trying to warn her and she recognizes his eyes and says it's you you made it you know nathan you're alive and he says i'm sorry mom he's coming i was too late i couldn't stop him and he gets taken back so he's talking about he's coming some man some person is coming is what he's saying uh and he gets taken away and then all hell breaks loose these sentinels attack and uh, people start dying i don't think nightcrawler is dead i think nightcrawler is just hurt calypso for sure is dead you see her pupil going magneto tries to save the morlocks and magneto and the morlocks die and magneto stops rogue from saving him and then rogue goes crazy and then since she goes crazy gambit doesn't want her to kill herself so gambit goes after the big sentinel and shit and gambit gets stabbed and then finally some logic in the comic book world because gambit is getting stabbed by the sentinel who's holding him gambit shoots his power because he touches him to light up the sentinel which is what i said if he lights up wolverine's claws then wolverine's gonna blow up it makes no sense wolverine what then just regenerates it didn't show none of that shit he lights up the sentinel until the sentinel lights up and it fucking blows up and that's how gambit sacrifices himself to save the fucking day it's badass and the last shot of the episode is rogue crying holding gambit saying gambit i don't feel you i don't feel you holy shit they fucking knocked it out of the park with one episode even though all the past five episodes have been ass i got a theory people are saying it's mr sinister because they've been showing on the previews mr sinister a lot and they even showed a captain america shield which might be a wolverine flashback i don't know how they're gonna tie captain america into the series but he's gonna come out later apparently or at least tease him um i think it's going to be someone from the future it's not mr sinister cable has several enemies and one of the enemies is this like guy who's a robot half sentinel i don't know what his name is but he's like a robot half sentinel and I think they had retconned it and said that he was the reason why there was even a Nimrod and a Master Mold and any of that shit. So I got a feeling they're going to tie that in since it's part of the newer comic books. They're going to tie that in and say that's the guy who's doing this. It's like this. It, I guess it's a human or mutant who's now a cyborg sentinel from the future and he wants to end mutants or whatever and he's from the future and he sent this to destroy genosha and shit and cable was trying to figure stop this from happening obviously throughout the rest of the season they're gonna stop this event from happening and gambit's not gonna be dead and so is magneto not gonna be dead but for now they're dead until they go back in time and fix this and shit um i like this episode i'm not gonna lie and i think a lot of the fighting and animation in this was really anime and it looked good it was really really like anime when rogue and gambit were fighting sentinels it was really and especially rogue it looked really anime looking dragon ball like she was flying and like it looked badass and i was just like okay this this one's good and they didn't hell hold back on this one. They did stuff that I didn't expect. And uh, 
they're keeping me guessing because like I only have one guess of what this is and I said it's, it's, it's some guy who's like half of a robot like a cyborg type of sentinel guy and he's the only cable villain I know because cable said he's coming I forget what his name is it's a weird name but I know he made Nimrod and 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 the master mold it was revealed that he came back and, and did all that shit um, so I don't know it's crazy we'll see what the other episodes the next episode we're not gonna get to see what happens right after this because the next episode is gonna be part two of the storm one that we saw in the last episode where it's said to be continued so they're gonna make us wait to see what happens after this ass um so yeah we'll see um i know i know i've been shitting on this series since it started and this is the first episode that i'm all like holy shit i don't have anything bad to say about this uh this was really good i'm just glad that gambit didn't come out in his little t-shirt and the woke ass fuck ass rock and roll bullshit i'm glad he didn't come out like that um you know what does bother me? I have to complain about something, right? I do. I have to. I have to. I have to do it. Rogue still sounds like an 80-year-old lady. It sounds like me. Imagine. Hey, sugar. Oh, come on, Remy. Don't be like that. I'm breaking your heart. And shit. That's how it sounds like. I don't like that. I still don't like that. I respect that lady for what she did back in the day, but there's no reason why they should have her when they can get a voice actress that sounds like the way Rogue is supposed to sound back in 1997. It's all I'm saying. All the other characters at least kind of sound like the way they're supposed to sound. This lady very, very obviously sounds freakingly old. That's all I'm going to say. With that being said, uh, Gambit and Magneto died. Holy fuck. We will see what happens. I am watching the Fallout show. Uh, I am watching it right now. It's They debuted just yesterday all fucking nine or ten episodes. So obviously I don't have enough time to watch it in one fucking day. Been watched. I have to work and make some money. Uh, so I will have a review of the entire first season of Fallout coming next week for you motherfuckers. I've only watched the first episode since yesterday. And I gotta tell you, this is a, it's a damn good fucking show. If all the rest of the episodes are going to be like episode one, it's a damn good fucking show. And uh, and, we, and that's coming from a person that knows nothing about Fallout. Nothing. So, you know, I'm being unbiased. So, well, uh, I'll let you know on Friday how the rest of the season turns out. But already, I can tell you, this is fucking gold already. One episode in. I'll let you know on Friday. Next Friday. Um... Remember, we will be doing uh, the fucking uh, wrestling show on the 21st, AW, on the Illegal Underground Broadcast channel. Uh, you will see the link probably on Saturday, the, 20th, the 20th. You'll see the link up there already on the main channel, ready for you for the next uh, next day. We'll watch it together. So we'll be there. We'll be here for that. Don't miss out on that. Uh, but I am done ranting for tonight. Boring the shit out of you guys. Uh, but I will leave you with a little bit of life advice to take home. And I will say this. You motherfuckers. Stay positive. Keep positive thoughts. Don't let that, that little creepy voice into your head. That naysayer shit that makes you think bad the devil threw it away the more good thoughts you have the more positives the more 
good dreams and, and and imaginative thoughts you have, the better life starts forming around. I am a testament to it. That's all I'm gonna say. Proven, proven fact. So do it. Cheers to you all. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you next week. Cheers. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh? <laughs>